A very good morning to all the invited guests and participants. In the beginning, I pay my respect to our source of motivation, Lord Buddha and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. On this occasion of national webinar on behalf of Dr. Madhukara Vasni, PWS Art and Commerce College, Nagpur, Maharashtra, I, Dr. Chandrasekhar Patil, welcome you all on this virtual platform of YouTube. The topic of this national webinar is Understanding Post-Lockdown Effect on Indian Politics historical perspective. Today we have with us invited guests for this webinar. I welcome ex-MLC, popular physician and academician, our patron, Dr. Madhukara Vasni, as a chair person. I welcome resource person, Dr. Sundesh Vak, professor and head Department of History, Mumbai University. I also welcome Dr. Sangeeta Beshra, Associate Professor and Head Department of History, Postgraduate Teaching Department, RTM Nagpur University, Nagpur. I also welcome resource person, Dr. Sailendra Devyankar, Professor, Department of Political Science, Government, Dragon. Science and Amravati. I warmly welcome moderator of second session, Dr. Mohan Kasikar, Professor and Head, Department of Political Science, RTM Nagpur University. I welcome our principal, Dr. Eswan Patil, and faculty member of our college. I also extend my warm welcome to expert, academician, and participant on this webinar from across the country. As a tradition of our college, our principal is presenting his welcome address. Our principal, Dr. Itman Patil, academician and senator in RTM Nagpur University, has teaching experience of over 30 years. He is also in the academic council member in the he is PhD expert in three universities. About 35 scholars have awarded PhD under his guidance. In his article in published national and international journals. He authored the book. I now call upon Dr. Eswan Patil, principal to present welcome address. Over to Dr. Principal, sir. Let me mute the sound. Sir, sound mute. Nice. Good morning. Good morning, all the respected guests and participants. Myself, Ishwam Patil, Principal of Dr. Madhukara Vasnik, PWS Arts and Commerce College, Nagpur. Welcome you all warmly in this one day national webinar. First of all, I pay my homage to Lord Buddha and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar who are our inspirations. Chairperson of today's webinar, 
एक्स एम एल सी एंड एजुकेशनलिस्ट डॉक्टर मधुकर राव जी वासनिक रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर संदेश वाघ फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई एंड शैलेन्द्र डॉक्टर शैलेन्द्र देवलंकर फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट विदर्भ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एंड ह्यूमैनिटीज अमरावती मॉडरेटर ऑफ बोथ सेशन डॉक्टर संगीता मिश्रा एंड डॉक्टर मोहन काशीकर बोथ फ्रॉम राष्ट्रसंत तुकड़ोजी महाराज नागपुर यूनिवर्सिटी हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑर्गनाइज ऑफ दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट वेबिनार एंड एक्सपर्ट एंड स्कॉलर्स एज पार्टिसिपेट ऑफ द वेबिनार इट इज इंडेड माई ग्रेट प्लेजर टू एक्सप्रेस माई ग्रेच्युटेड टू द डिस्टिग्नेस गेस्ट of this webinar who gave consent to deliver their address and presentation in this webinar organized by department of history and political science dear all since we are under lockdown for over 3 months due to pandemic outbreak we are all trying various was to reach out the student to help them with remaining syllabus and engaging virtual classes the digital media proud blessing to the institution to bridge the gap between student and teachers who are away from the classroom i am aware of the situation that many of the students are unable to cope with the digital media due to various unfortunate situation but we couldn't stop our duties to those who are sincerely wants to study by overcoming all hurdles i congratulate all the teacher fraternity for the their dedication towards teaching and learning the webinar are to becomes the subject of debate these days because of overwards of the events but i deem refreshing teachers knowledge and providing platform from them for engaging in the purple research activities is the need of the hour i appreciate our participants in spite of this debate you are registered to this webinar i thank you all on behalf of our college and organizing team talking about our institution dr madhukar rao vasnik pws arts and commerce college was founded in 1968 our chairman dr madhukar rao vasnik the institution completed its golden jubilee in 2018 successfully the institution has arts and commerce faculty from junior and undergraduate to post graduate courses with our with over 5000 strength of students the institution has six phg centers and ugc sponsored different coaching centers the institution is always engaged in academic research and social ex extension activities through its various wings student of our college every year bags their names in merit list of rashtrant tukloji maharaj nagpur university and received gold medal the college is now for its sports especially its popularly in hockey and football the college accredited b plus by nag bangalore since its third cycle the college is always support the academic endeavor fostering research activities and development of faculties and students the present national webinar by department of history and political science is also the part of the commitment to the quality in higher education this is fourth webinar in the line being organized by the college i take this opportunity to congratulate all the teachers and non teaching staff of the college for working hard successfully organizing this webinar 
and gathering experts and scholars on virtual platform for the necessary academic exercise i hope the deliberations made in this webinar will be of great value and useful for the society thanking you i now proceeding dr c s patil thanks thank you sir for your address and briefly introducing the college as well coming to the theme of the national webinar covid 19 pandemic was was the life that was was thank you sir for your address and briefly introducing the college as well coming to the theme of the national webinar covid 19 pandemic severely affected the life across the world many strong economies have collapsed due to long pushed lockdown period therefore this year 2020 will suffer great loses in every sector this happened only after world war 2 presently the biggest question stand before the government is of the migrant laborers who were struck for more than 2 month in different cities some walk thousand of miles hungry and thirsty some unfortunate lost their lives of starvation and trauma of losing wage most of the laborers have now reached their places but now question is how to get them employment to situation as a matter of facts these migrants are mostly from backward communities like sc st and obc therefore this is the time for government and academicians to contemplate in the light of this issue department of history and political science of our college have decided to invite expert and scholar in this national webinar to discuss this situation now this is the time to listen to resource person of the first session dr sandesh wag dr wag is head of department of history in the university of mumbai and chairman board of studies history and archaeology he is also the founder president of ambedkarite history congress which was formed recently he is also member of board of studies in over four different universities he was also former member sc st commission in government of maharashtra presently he is member of contingency plan committee and intercaste marriage drafting committee government of maharashtra he is recognized research guide nine student have already been awarded phd and eight scholar awarded mphil under his guidance he has 44 books and over 100 research paper to his credit he was he was invited as a resource person in different international and uh, seminar mainly in japan sri lanka thailand indonesia malaysia he is also recipient of state level nss volunteer award sir he is also ambedkar right thinker most popularly i now call upon dr sandesh wag to deliver his address as a resource person over to dr sandesh wag sir thank you sir at the very outset i would like to congratulate the college for organizing such an important workshop international uh, national webinar on a topic of covid 19 and it is the duty of the colleges to come out with some solutions for the various issues that are arising in the society as ugc also has said that 
the research should have some kind of a social utility i hope that this webinar which is been organized by the college will have some social utility to a large extent i warmly welcome the participants of this national webinars which are from the all over the india those who are the participants i welcome them all i also welcome the speakers of the uh, national webinar professor shailendra devankar sir who is a great scholar of repute who is an international scholar who is writing about the international foreign policies and this covid 19 period he has been interviewed at many places well uh, i congratulate the principal of the college uh, for organizing such a wonderful work uh, webinar again professor patil uh, uh, he is a principal and uh, the head of the department of history and head of the department of political science those who are uh, organizer of this program again uh, my colleague from the uh, saint fraternity department of history uh, sir rashtra santosh guruji maharaj nagpur university uh, professor sangeeta mishra madam she is there i welcome her and i welcome each and every person over here and uh, ex mlc uh, honorable vasnik sahib is also there i uh, welcome all and i begin with my topic of covid 19 and this pandemic situations and ambedkar right perspective to overcome this uh, issues at the juncture of time well uh, when i'm talking about this particular points i would like to say that this uh, pandemic situation is there everywhere uh, in the world and there is no yet solutions find out to this pandemic situation and in this situation uh, most of the countries have taken a solution that solution is about lockdown as i would like to say about the various phases of the lockdown and its impact on the indian economy to a larger extent then you will come to the point of uh, amid correct solutions for overcoming these issues well the point number 1 is that the covid 19 outbreak is uh, a pandemic situation all over the world and india has faced the lockdown at the central level at the state level the first lockdown was from the 25th march to 14th april 2020 the second lockdown was 15th april to 3rd may 2020 third lockdown was from the 4th may to 17th may 2020 and then we found that from the uh, the next lockdown 8th may onwards that was 30 31st may 2020 is 18 may to 2020 was the next lockdown and now we have the lockdown till 30th june uh, to 20 so we have faced this five different lockdowns in due course of time because it's a susceptible uh, disease that is uh, covid 19 and in order to avoid all these situations uh, that are arising in uh, in the different countries like italy france germany america the government has taken a right measure and it's a appropriate measure to uh, so, uh, to overcome the problem of this covid 19 issues uh, at large so this is one point that we need to understand again when we are trying to have an ambedkar right solution to overcome this pandemic situation that what we need to do is an important point that is there before all of us so in that point and in that consideration i would like to say that in this pandemic situation we need to analyze our public health policies and we also need to understand and analyze that what was the situation in the earlier phase of indian history so we have a pandemic situations in the earlier time and that and the early time that uh, we have faced the plague also we have faced the various uh, uh, various diseases that were there and in, at the indian indian level and why that time uh, this issue was not so serious and why this time this issue is serious that we need to understand see basically the vaccine was available for the play, uh, various diseases that were there at that particular juncture of time but now there is no vaccine available as such right now for this particular Uh, covid 19 that is corona therefore the situations are absolutely uh, critical right now this is what i would like to submit over here and again i would like to say that why this is happening so is an important point that the government needs to study and analyze that they need to uh, invest more and more in the public health this is one of the important point see the data is available with us about the gdp and the data is also available with us about the how much uh, money is been spent on this public health policy this is an important point to be no noted the public health uh, uh, sector uh, you know the two uh, less than 2 2% gdp is been spent on the public health sector this is an important issue that needs to be addressed to a larger extent and we do not have the enough number of hospitals we do not have the enough number of ventilators we do not have the enough number of medical facilities and enough number of staff also and why this happens so is a matter of question that we need to understand speaking about ambedkar right perspective to solve this problems i would like to say that dr baba saheb ambedkar i uh, when he was a member of the rajya sabha that time he has said that the most of the money that the indian budget is been spent on the military aspect but the, that money also has to be spent on what that money has to be spent in the public health issues that money has to be spent uh, spent on the various 
welfare schemes for the public welfare that was been explained by dr baba saheb ambedkar to the larger extent and his vision is true in two sense that the government needs to understand that public health sector and the welfare of the people needs to be given more attendance than this military and defense and many other things on which they have given more and more uh, concentration and the most of the wealth of the india has been uh, given in that particular sections so so this is one point that i would like to say and again the point is that uh, where we come to know that uh what is the situation of this at this particular juncture of time when this uh, when we have very less uh, public health workers uh, this is one point that that will be known see as in the newspaper there are various news that has appeared it is uh, said that uh, they require mbbs they require md they require ms they require rs they require various things and then there are roster is given and then they said that schedule cast schedule drive many populations people are there that requires to be uh, given the uh, in that particular uh, juncture of time uh, uh, they should they should be recruited in the government sectors but the issue is that this ambedkar right perspective we would like to highlight and say to the government that if there is there is a provision if there is a provision at this juncture of time of filling up the backlog why you are filling up with the temporary positions this is one point see for 20 days or particular amount of time if you are filling up the post then why the people will come because it's a stipulated salary when they are highly qualified people at this juncture of time uh, this needs to be understood that the cut off was there all the time and that because of that cut off the medical uh, post that were supposed to be filled up that were not filled up uh, in due course of time therefore uh, we request the government and urge the government that the special recruitment drive to be carried out as uh, sushil kumar shinde was the chief minister of maharashtra and under his tenure of the chief ministership he has taken up the special recruitment drive and because of the special recruitment drive the huge backlog that was there in the health sector uh, or many many other sector government sector which was tried to be filled up uh, and then later on we find that this was a very useful policy that was been framed by sushil kumar shinde and at the juncture of time the government needs to come up with a, a policy to fill up the uh fill up the backlog of the various posts in the public health uh, sector and this is required because we need more and more doctors we required more and more nurses we required more and more public health workers to work in this pandemic situation for the nation so this is one important because you know in the private hospitals they are not following the government resolutions they are not following the government Uh, policies that are, that that are been implemented and in many many private hospitals it is observed that they are not even admitting the corona patients so this is happening and at this juncture of time the india needs to be strengthened with the public health policy and the government hospitals and the government uh, centers where the treatment can be given out to these people this is an important point this uh, i would like to say the 50% of the public health sectors are not filled due to the budget cuts the current allocation of the public health is less than 2% of the gdp and the special recruitment drive needs to be taken by the central government and also the state government is in submission it's a humble submission by me that uh, i am making before the all the intelligence here though the government is doing lot for the in the public sector but this is an important suggestion that i would like to say that we need to require more and more uh, public uh, health workers and this uh, medical practitioners are required in more and more time and this is required for what purpose this is required to fight the issue of the covid 19 this is one first humble submission that i would like to say see the, uh, the the next point that i would like to say that the migrant workers are the most vulnerable uh, vulnerable uh, populations of india in informal sectors uh, we find that the 92% of the workforce uh, they, they are the workers are working and they are not uh, treated uh, humanly and there are various types of uh, migrant workers that are there in india Uh, for example contract workers are there seasonal workers are there uh, then we find that agricultural sector the workers are there street vendors are there barbers are there craft craft waste workers are there so various workers which are there in this uh, 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 as a migrant workers they are working uh, they are working in the road transportations building construction people and so so and so uh, this uh, data goes on and on so we need to understand that uh, what are these their their daily issues that are there there are they have the issues of the basic needs they have the issues of their lively uh, food they have the issues of food electricity water and they have their own issues of living standards also that we need to understand the next point that i would like to say is that the government has to come up with some policies to generate the employment to a larger extent and uh, that i will talk about that in the due course of time in my presentation right now and the migrant workers are uh, because of the lockdown they don't they have lost their jobs they have lost their income source and in order to survive in their life they have gone to on such an extent uh, that uh, they are decided to go to their villages so that they can live there happily because they cannot satisfy the day to day needs of the life 
in the cities this is an important point to be noted so as it is been rightly said they are walking from one place to another place thousands of kilometers they are walking from one place to another place why they are walking so is an important point that needs to be understood because they are not able to satisfy their basic needs they not they are not able to maintain their livelihood and they are not able to maintain their family needs so therefore it's a survival of the fittest policy therefore they have they are going from one place to another place they are facing various problems for example they are going barefooted they are having problems of the hunger they have having the problems of the dehydrations they are having the various problems that are there uh, in, in in this pandemic situation suffocation was there is there dehydration is there starvation is there reproductive reproductive issues are there many of the migrants uh, have their Uh, issues of the health diabetes issues is there stress is there blood pressure high blood pressure hypertension issues are there and then the issues uh, with their family life is are the many of the women they are they were migrants they are having this pregnancy uh, issues and many of them have uh, delivered their babies on the road solely so this is this is a situation where they have faced lots lot of problems in the in the life that needs to be understood so when we are trying to understand all these issues what are the ambedkar uh, issues uh, so uh, solutions for coming over this problem that is an important point that i would like to talk about that see uh, pandemic situation was not there that is not the condition it was there in earlier situations and times also as we know that chhatrapati shahu maharaj has framed up a right policy at a particular juncture of time when there was a pandemic situation and there is tenure see what he did that he did a industrial survey then he started the various employment programs and when he started the various employment programs that was useful for the various people uh, they were belonging to the depressed classes and the migrant Parents were also helped because of his policy. The government needs to come with the various employment generation policies at this juncture of time. It's absolutely important submission that I'm making right now over here, and this has a reason because they have the economic insecurity. They have lost their job, and uh, why and how so that government can come with this policy that I'll explain in due course of time. See, many schemes are there, like Manrega scheme is there of the government of India. that needs to be implemented right now because that will uh, satisfy the economic conditions and economic needs to a larger extent so at this juncture of time we need to understand that this organized and unorganized sector is there where this uh, migrants are working to a larger extent that time the government needs to work on the uh, uh, judiciary level also see the interstate migration workman act is 1979 is there and labor codes 2019 is there it should be properly implemented so that the security is there for this labors to a large extent and at this juncture of time the atrocities are also happening to more and more on the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes as arvind bansod case that is of the atrocity case that is there in the media and again the, there is in pune in nagpur various other places the atrocities are caused on the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes they are killed assassinated and forced to commit the suicides so at this particular juncture of time it is the duty of the state and it is the duty of the various machineries to take care of the cognizance of this uh, issues though this is issues of the uh, depressed classes but this is also the issue that are uh, is raised in this particular juncture of time the uh, maharashtra state commission for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes there is in the worli they have to take the cognizance of the matter they have to go to this particular place and they have to visit it's their duty they are getting the salary see one person Who's working as a chairman or the member of the Shuddha Commission is getting one lakh rupees uh, amount of honorarium to work and on that behalf of the uh, by, by, by the government. What they are doing is a matter of question that needs to be understood. See, the protection of civil rights cell is also there, and Kaiser uh, Khalees and Special Inspector General of the Police is there. How many sites that he has visited where these atrocities and assassinations have happened in the lockdown period is a matter of question. And as a public society, we need to answer. Uh, we need to have the answers from this public uh, sector as uh, a high power committee we also have the there and the nodal uh, the nodal uh, officer is there for the scc atrocity act he has to work the minority uh, uh, department is there and that minority department former secretary was there he was the nodal officer of this scc pu act where does this scc pu act no, nodal officer is there right now where is this person is there right now who is a uh, protection of civil rights special inspector general of police who is the charge who has to look after this all the situations have you visited that particular spots and places and given the justice is a matter of question that needs to be understood coming back to the important point of the migrants there is a institution called as jana sahas and he has they have talked about the statistical data of the migrant issues see basically i would like to talk about this all the issues right now the, the jobs are not there many of the people have lost their jobs see they have carried a survey in the north india and they said that the 92.5 laborers have already job lost their job in the lockdown period See, it's an unorganized sector. It's a formal informal sector where there is no assurity. 
see we are as a teacher as a professor we have a job insurance job security we have a ppf you have an insurance but what about them they do not have anything as such right now so they have lost their job in this lockdown period we are facing this five lockdown periods and if they have lost their job and then there are issues of their daily wages see day to day life issues are there for them and those who are working as a uh, in this particular sector it is also been understood that uh, most of the uh, the migrant workers are having this uh, uh, basically issues of uh, their uh, minimum daily wages which is been fixed by the central government as i like to say that 200 to 400 a day is for uh, uh, is been uh, is been decided for this skilled 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 and unskilled workers so 692 is for the skilled uh, skilled workers 629 for the semi skilled workers and 579 uh, is for the other category uh, uh, persons that is unskilled workers so skilled workers unskilled workers semi circle workers and they are they, they should get the minimum wages but are these people getting the minimum wages this is the question in the survey it is observed that they are not getting the minimum wages in the pre lockdown period now the situations have changed and then we have understanding that uh, there are various issues that they have they have already lost their jobs in many of them have lost their jobs survey are telling about that see again the government has come out with various uh, schemes but it is observed that the uh, only 18.8% of all the people do have their proof of the jobs and if they have the this proof of the job then only they can uh, uh, then only they can get uh, this particular uh, benefits of the schemes see the number of uh, the janasthas has taken up the overall database of the 6, 66000 workers and they have come to an uh, uh, information that only uh, 99 94% do not have this uh, various cards of the governments see aadhar card was not there and then bank detail cards were not there ration card is not there bpl card is not there monarega card is not there POCW card is not there, Antyodaya card is not there. So this is a survey carried out by the uh, Delhi-based institution, and then we come to know that these are the issues that they are facing. See, most of the migrants belonging to the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe community. That also I'll come to the point, and I'll also be in specific about the statistical uh, aspect of the how many migrants are there, and how much is that. Hands to mouth situation is there for the migrant workers that we come to know to a larger extent, and there there are various issues. many of them are having the issues of the ration and many of them are issues having of the day to day basic lives that is an important many of them do not have their base money for uh, satisfying their basic needs if the for the children and many of them do not have the rations also because they are migrant workers and they do not have the identity uh, for the ration card in the particular state they cannot access to this uh, ration also but the maharashtra government has come up with a very nice policy that uh, this ration can be given with the help of the Uh, other cards also and then this policy needs to be implemented to a large extent that we need to understand to a large extent i would like to say uh, over here and submit over here that the basically uh, one out of 130 crores of the uh, population of india uh, it is been said that vibhuti patel ma'am from the sndt university she has given presentation she has referred to some of the data empirical data out of 134 uh, 30 crores population 45.36 crore are uh, internal migrants so this is a very important point that we need to know 44.36 crore population is from the internal migrants so such a huge section is there i would like to again say that what is the package given by the government this needs to be understood see 1.7 uh, lakh pack, uh, crores package was given that was a general package given by the finance minister but was it directly useful for the migrant that is an important question that we need to understand again 68000 crores loans have been write off for the industrialists like ramdev baba and choksi company are they going to uh, give the entire salary of the particular month to their employees that is a matter of question if not so then why they are been write off this loans is another point 20 lakh thousand crores have been uh, away, uh, yeah, the benefits have been given to the msm and whether this msm is going to Uh, give the protection to their laborers is also a matter of question but where is the package of the laborers that we need to understand and if you want to understand that dr baba sahab ambedkar has made a very right uh, provision in the constitution of india regarding the scheduled caste scheduled tribe and the backward caste peoples in the india and i would like to say the details of the same uh, for for the intelligentsia and for the peoples over here so that they understand what exactly are the financial uh, statistical documents and where it can be utilized see shau maharaj has implemented this various schemes for the benefit of the people similarly the schemes that are there uh, uh, because of the dr baba sahab ambedkar in the constitution uh, that is what exactly we need to understand that is scheduled caste component plan and the uh, scheduled tribe uh, uh, the tribal sub plan so earlier it was called scheduled caste component plan and then it is called as a tribal sub plan now i would like to come to the point that the niti aayog has come out with a new nomenclature which talks that 
for the scheduled cars it is direct action plan for the scheduled cars and for the scheduled drive it is direct action plan for the scheduled drives so this is a nomenclature so i have analyzed and understood the finance ministry's budget on the 1st february uh, 2020 the finance minister has an, uh, an announced its budget and when it has announced its budget what is the allocation for the scheduled cars and scheduled drive that we need to understand to a larger extent and when you are trying to understand this we come to a conclusion that what exactly things are there in this financial year allocation for the scheduled cars is done for the 83257 crore for the scheduled cars for the welfare and the benefit so it is only the year of the government are again crore rupees and we come to know that what are the schemes 331 schemes are there for the scheduled cars people and 327 schemes are there for the scheduled drive if these schemes are there then why these schemes are not been utilized that is a matter of question that we need to understand as chhatrapati shahu maharaj has come with the right policy for implementing these various schemes so the government has to come with the various policies to implement these schemes for the benefit of the scheduled cars and scheduled drive population in india that we need to understand analyzing these populations and, and uh, policies we need to understand why this government is spending and how much population is there for which they are spending that is an important point see the total population of the scheduled cars in india is 201 million again the total population of the scheduled drive is 104 million again i would like to say and submit over here is that what exactly targeted schemes are there and how much allocation is being utilized on 16174 uh, targeted schemes are the uh, money is being utilized so, and then we come to know that these non targeted schemes are absolutely more to a larger extent this is a technical presentation but in this technical presentation i would like to submit that there are absolutely very gaps that uh, that are there that needs to be satisfied to a larger extent and the government has to come with a uh, important policy to uh, overcome these problems see uh, shaw maharaj has created an employment generation program by way of irrigation projects by way of uh, building the various roads at that particular juncture of time then can the government initiate this action right now yes they can see i have already spoken about the 331 schemes for the scheduled cars and the other schemes for the scheduled drive what are these schemes i would like to say and then these solutions uh, can be there uh, which is the solution for the state level and the uh, in, uh, in national level also pradhan mantri uh, kisan uh, uh, yojana is there pm kisan yes. anganwadi scheme is there and some construction support scheme is there pradhan mantri awas yojana is there see under this pradhan mantri awas yojana that is there the houses can be built for the scheduled cars scheduled drive as we do have a valmiki ambedkar yojana in maharashtra we have a ramai awas yojana in the maharashtra the money can be utilized as far as my knowledge is concerned as i have referred to, uh, to kishor gajbi and the budget is published by government of maharashtra the central government state government budget for the scheduled cast i am speaking only for the scheduled cast uh, people is only 19500 crores if the 19500 crores is the budget then why this schemes cannot be uh, implemented see the rural development program uh, is already there that is sbm program that is uh, r uh, rp uh, rpc program is there crop insurance scheme is there so these are the schemes where this employment can be generated to the people this is the important submission that i am submitting over here again we have got various schemes that i am like, just submitting over here to the all the august uh, august uh, intelligentsia is that the uh, uh, there are various schemes we under which these schemes uh, horticulture schemes are there national food security mission schemes are there and public support schemes are also there national fellowships are given so various schemes are there but at this particular juncture of time as we found in nandurbar the collector has come out with the various schemes of uh, building the roads at the particular juncture of time so this schemes can generate the employment see the people have their basic needs problems they have their day to day needs problem they have migrated from uh, the urban areas to the rural areas they are staying there they do not have their employment they do not have any financial sources they are in the depression they are in the anxiety they have their family issues they have the issues of the paying repaying of the loans they have their various issues and if this issues has to be addressed then then this issues can be addressed by implementing the schemes which are the government schemes which are already in year month this this is important point that needs to be understood as i would like to submit that the 41 ministries in the central government that are there uh, they should allocate actually 1,39,170 crores for the scheduled cars community i repeat that 41 ministries in the central government should earmark 1,39,170 Two crore rupees for the scheduled cars community under these three hundred and twenty-three schemes. But what they are allocating right now is eighty-three thousand two hundred and seventy-five crore. And again, I would like to say for the scheduled drive, they should have allocated the money uh, in this particular scheme is more. 
but they are not allocating the 77034 crore rupees has to be allocated but they are actually allocated only 53653 crore if the allocation is less in this concern i would like to submit that here is uh, injustice on the on the basis of the populations so that time we come to know that whatever money is been earmarked and allocated this can generate an employment to the shurul gas and shurul tribe people and they can give their day to day needs, needs needs can be satisfied to a larger extent that we uh, we need to understand i would like to submit over here that the most of the money that is there for the shurul gas and shurul tribe is not been utilized for them and it is utilized for the irrigations and many other schemes which are not directly benefited to the shurul gas and shurul tribe therefore it is an injustice on the shurul gas and shurul tribe on the behalf of uh, on the behalf of the ambedkar history congress i would like to urge the government that please do come out with some kind of a schemes that seems will be directly beneficially to the shurul gas shurul tribes and their migrant issues can be redressed of see 20 lakh crores have been 1000 uh, crores have been uh, give, uh, given help for the msme then we have 1.7 lakh package given for the covid 19 then we have that 66000 crore package has been given to waive all the loans for this big industries what is the package for the shurul gas shurul tribe and the backward caste those who are migrant workers those who are the millions of population 201 and 107 million population, approximately 26 to 27% population of india <laughs> Do, do I have a do I have a time or shall I wind up, sir? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, again. Uh, uh, do continue, sir. Do continue. Okay, how much time, sir? I do have five five two minutes. So five minutes. Okay, I would like to sum up and wind up with saying that the scheduled caste component plan and the tribal plan has to be utilized in this particular period of time. That is point number one submission. Again, I would like to say that the special recruitment drive was carried out by Sushil Kumar Shinde when he was the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Similarly, at the juncture of time, we need to come up with the special recruitment drive (GR). Which was already been existing in the practices. Again, I would like to submit that the 50% cutoff was there in the medical sector, that is public health sector. Because of that, the 50% backlog is there in the public health sector, and this is this empirical data that is available on the public domain that we need to understand. And it is uh, it is observation of the many economists also. I also uh, do understand and uh, uh, submit that the 50% backlog is there for filling up the various. Public health sector post, for example, MD post is there, MBBS post is there, nurse post is there, ward boy post is there. If these posts are vacant and if these are not being filled, then why you are going ahead with this time for filling up with the temporary vacancies? You need to go to fill up with the special recruitment drive to fill up this entire post. So people will be happy to work. They will come more and more. Even. Government for the betterment of the society. Government must come with a special recruitment drive, and they need to fill up the policy because we have to fight with the COVID-19. We need more and more public health workers. They will not work unless and until they they have a uh, surety. They will not work unless and until they have a job employment and uh, in their particular sector. This is an important point that is there. Again, I would like to say that the 83,000 crores approximately that are there for the Shurul Gas Component Plan that has been given, they need to be utilized uh, every every time. That is an important point. See, if the budget of Maharashtra for the Shurul Gas Component Plan is about the 19,500 crores, then that is not been utilized. That budget is going for where? That is going for the public uh, the, that roads, that is going for the irrigation, that is diverted to many other schemes which are not beneficiary for the schemes. See, see, 126 crores for the union budget is being spent on the. Protection and preservations of these tigers and elephants are the tigers. If they are not, then why this money of the scheduled tribes is spent on these such non-targeted schemes and unutilized schemes, and they are not beneficiary schemes for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes? That is my humble submission before the uh, before the government. And in, in this situation, at this juncture of time, the humble submission. to overcome the problem of unemployment to overcome the problem of the anxiety depression and various issues that are there with the schedule caste schedule tribe and the migrant peoples of india we need to come up with the schemes like manarega we need to start this various programs uh, at the juncture of time this uh, road development scheme is there that is there in the schedule caste component plan that is there in the tribal sub plan that needs to be started to a large extent then, then this pradhan mantri awas yojana is there ramai awas yojana is there then valmiki ambedkar awas yojana is there we need to start see chatrapati shaw maharaj is the ideal model for us he has started this scheme in the pandemic situation in 1885 at that particular juncture of time 
he was a visionary if he can implement so then why this government cannot implement is a matter of question how many shurul ka shurul tribe and the backward caste may mlas mps are there they are raising the voice to start these schemes when there is a 41 departments they have earmarked their allocations and that has been that is that is budgeted if it is budgeted that much that allocation is already done and there is a provision why these people are not raising the voice to, about them see the people have given the uh, msme 20 lakh thousand crores they have given to them 66 thousand crores who have been waived off right of uh, loans by this uh, big industrialist and this uh, uh, 1.7 lakh crore package is given then where is the package of the shurul ka shurul ka by the migrant people in india that is a question if it is year marked and it is published by the finance ministry of india then why it is not been utilized and why the issues are there the only need is that the people those who are the most vulnerable population of india those who are working from one place to another place do not have their basic needs they are working with the pregnant wives they are working with the children they are working with the senior citizens and they have died on the roads they have the women have the, uh, have got the pregnancy in the roads at this juncture of time it was a duty and the need of the government that this schemes this money this allocation could have been implemented see unemployment people are from there from the schedule cast and schedule drives they can be given a, a, a employment uh, money as in, in some schemes that those who are unemployed they are giving some kind of an amount and installments are given in their accounts such kind of an accounts can be opened rationing is a scheme which has been run by the uh, spe spe special sex sectors i have a data of government of maharashtra that is in 2011 they have published they says that uh, many of the people 100% of the villages are there they have a scheduled caste population 50% people uh, belong to the scheduled caste people uh, they, they have the population that is been published in such villages we have where they have 100% population of the scheduled caste 50% population of the scheduled caste 34 40% population of the scheduled caste the rationing schemes can be implemented for the scheduled caste under this direct action plan for, plan for the scheduled caste and direct action plan for the scheduled tribe it, it can be done it can be done the minister for the social justice and special assistance and the minister for the tribal ministry and the secretaries need to work on that the cabinet meeting has to be taken and then this uh, this can be done so that the people those who are dying those who, those who are suffering a lot of uh, they have see we are in the in the lockdown from last two months we have got so much of emotional issues we have got so much of fears depression anxiety in our mind now you try to understand those who are working if they have such issues those who do not have money those who are having this hands to mouth situation what will the issues for their life the issues will be absolutely difficult for them the issues of the children to get an education the issues of paying the day to day needs issues of giving the rents to the flats issues of staying issues of having food these are various issues that they have even those who do not have the ration card those who are migrant workers what will they do how they will survive government needs to come with the policy earlier stage in actually there should have been interstate committee and then they could have understood that this much of the population from the bihar is there in maharashtra this much of population is there from the karnataka in maharashtra this much of the population is there from the uttar pradesh in maharashtra and the government could have come with the policy that they can be transported by way of bus by way of this this could have been done but it, it was not done earlier situation though they have walked from one place to another but the government has their own concern that we do understand that is also a problem that was there but at this juncture of time i would like to submit and say that dr baba saheb ambedkar has come out with the right solution and policy and because of his efforts and because of him the constitution of india has enabled the central government by way of article 46 and the direct principle of the state policy and the fundamental rights that are there in the constitution policy and accordingly this uh, direct action plan for the scheduled caste and direct action plan for the scheduled tribe has been implemented by the central government and the state government it needs to be properly implemented employment should be generated special recruitment drive needs to be started so that the issues of the migrants the issues of the depressed classes will be redressed and solved with this few words i uh, thanks the management for uh, calling me to give an experts uh, talk on this particular uh, particular aspect and i am also thankful uh, to the head of the department of the history and the principal uh, patil sir and the management and the Uh, the the entire uh, the the entire crew of the management i'm thankful to them uh, for inviting me to explain our ambedkarite perspective on this covid 19 issues uh, many of them have expressed their issues in the different dimensions but this ambedkarite perspective issues is absolutely important because it is the issue of 201 million schedule caste it is the issue of 107 million schedule tribes which approximately constitute the populations which is absolutely population of 27% population of india and this population needs a special package 
as everybody has got their own package even though we have our package in the scheduled cast component plan and tribal sub plan that is yet to be fully utilized and if that is utilized our issues will be redressed thank you very much jai bhim namo buddhay thank you thank you sir If anybody has their own questions and queries, they can yes, uh, yes. give in the chat box. I can answer them at the latter stage. Thank you, sir, for your research speech. Thank Now the house is open for the question and answer. I invite scholar to ask question, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Doctor Walk, sir. Hello. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, I'm reading you. Hi, sir. Ah, uh, there is a question on YouTube. Yes. Ah, uh, it's posted by Subed Nagdeve. Yes. Ah, uh, it's in Hindi. He says. सरकार की ओर से गरीबों के खाते में सिर्फ पांच सौ रुपए डालना क्या उचित है सरकार की ओर से 2014 के बाद से ही स्वास्थ्य बजट को कम करना ही वर्तमान समय में कोरोना से लड़ने में हम कहीं कम तो नहीं पड़ रहे मेरा मानना यह है कि अगर सरकार जो कुछ भी मानक उन्होंने निश्चित किया है जिस मानक के द्वारा जो पैसा बैंक में जमा किया जा रहा है वो जमा करना आज की तारीख में काफी जरूरी है क्योंकि अगर ये मानक जमा नहीं किया गया तो जो दैनंदिन जीवन में लोगों की जो समस्याएं हैं वो समस्या और ज्यादा बढ़ जाएगी हाँ ये बात जरूरी है कि जिस तरह से इन्फ्लेशन महंगाई बढ़ रही है उस उसके तहत कुछ इस योजना के बारे में विचार होना काफी जरूरी है लेकिन फिर भी जो गवर्नमेंट कर रही है वो करना काफी जरूरी है जिन लोगों ने रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं किया है इस विभिन्न योजनाओं के अंतर्गत जो रजिस्ट्रेशन करना पड़ता है बैंक में उनके खाते खोलने पड़ते हैं उन्होंने भी खाते खोलने जरूरी है ये मेरा मानना जरूरी है क्योंकि जो कंस्ट्रक्शन एरियाज है जो वहां के लोग है बहुत सारे लोगों ने अपना रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं किया है क्योंकि ये जो बहुत सारी स्कीम्स है उसमें क्या किया जाता है कि कॉन्ट्रैक्टर को कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दिया जाता है और कॉन्ट्रैक्टर कुछ माइग्रेंट लेबर्स को उसके हाथ के अंदर काम करने के लिए बोलता है तो वो खाता या उनका अकाउंट वो ओपन नहीं कर पाते गवर्नमेंट की उनकी जानकारी नहीं प्राप्त होती तो उनको उसका बेनिफिट नहीं मिल पाता तो जो कुछ भी गवर्नमेंट दे रही है वो सही मायने में लोगों तक पहुंचने के लिए ये भी जरूरी है कि जो लोगों ने रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं किया है उनका रजिस्ट्रेशन होना काफी जरूरी है लेकिन गवर्नमेंट जो कुछ भी कर रही है मेरे ख्याल से वो बहुत बढ़िया तरीका है कि जिसके तहत लोगों के समस्याओं का हल होना आज की तारीख में हो रहा है अगला कुछ सवाल हो तो बताइए No sir, I don't have, I don't uh, see any. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you sir. We can go ahead, sir. The next presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Walker, for heartly interaction with participants, and one again, thank you so much, sir. Now this is the time to listen to the moderator of the session, Dr. Sangita Mishram. Dr. Sangita Mishram. is an associate professor and head department of history post graduate teaching department nagpur university she was former dean of faculty of humanities rtm nagpur university she has over two books to her credit published 16 research paper in various journals and she has contributed over seven chapter in book she also have completed major research project sponsored by ugc she is recognized phd guide and six scholar have completed doctoral degree under her guidance she has been awarded with prestigious recognition as well some of them are world Environment Education Award, 
मणिरत्न शिक्षण एजुकेशनल अवार्ड मां अहिल्या स्त्री रत्न समाज सेवा पुरस्कार सावित्रीबाई फुले कर्तृत्ववान महिला अवार्ड सी जे डेडिकेटेड एकेडमिशियन स्कॉलर एंड रिसर्चर आय नाउ इन्वाइट डॉक्टर संगीता मेश्राम टू डिलीवर हर एड्रेस एज द मॉडरेटर ऑफ द सेशन डॉक्टर संगीता मेश्राम मैडम हेलो नमस्कार आय ऑल्सो आय वेलकम ऑल द स्पीकर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ द वेबिनार and the organizer of this webinar before moving to my topic which is given to me by the pws college is kalantarit mazurancha samasya ani ambedkar vadi drushtiko i think dr vag has covered most of the points in his speech hence i will cut some points of my speech thus we can save the time span for the remaining webinar activity okay then ever we think actually the topic is given in marathi excuse me whenever we think about the um, migration so i have an migration corridor uh, information which i i would like to share with you excuse me one minute please sorry okay so whenever we talk about the problems of migrated what does it mean by migration by natural geography moving from one place to another place that means migration so what are the causes of the migration so there are some causes of the migration uh unemployment is one major cause then less wages getting less major wages in the local area that is another cause then for uh, getting better job opportunities in uh, other area that is the cause one other cause is in village jobs are attached with the caste constitution see here we are discussing about the migration migration the causes of the migration and the kinds of the migration rozandari cha shodha jithe ti upalabdh ahe tithe swasthan sodun jana manje stalantar asa apan marathi thodkyat manu shakto so unemployment less wages better up, searching for better opportunity these are the causes गावल गाव ग्रामीण भागा मध्य गाँव लेवल वरती जी कहीं रोजंदारी उपलब्ध है ती रोजंदारी कुछ तरी जीनिहाय बन बाहर पड़ने साइग्रेसन हा एक मार्ग लेबर्स नो कुछ तरी मन एक आशा कि शहर आधुनिक है आधुनिक तिथे जास्त संधि मिलती जीनिहाय व्यवसाय बाहर निगने की संधि सन्म्मा जगने की शक्यता निर्माण होती स्थलांतरित प्रकार है डोमेस्टिक मैग्रेसन चेन मैग्रेसन फैमिल मैग्रेसन डोमेस्टिक वर्कर्स मन शहर मध्य प्रमाण ग्रामीण भाग लोक शिफ्ट होता फॉर एक्जाम्पल मैगा सीटीज मध्य डोमेस्टिक ट्वेंटी फोर अवर्स वर्कर्स मैग्रेसन मोटा प्रमाण होता अपने देन चेन मैग्रेसन दैट मीन्स a person from a family one or two person from a family shifted to the city for getting job and after getting those job they started calling their family member from their native place and thus the chain they developed the chain so migration ji chain taiyar hote tyachanantar purna kutumbacha salantar barechda hota whenever we think about the migration अभी मैग्रेसन प्रकार विचार जेव अपन करो इंटरनैशनल मैग्रेसन एंड नैशनल मैग्रेसन दीज आर दू मेजर फैक्टर टू काइंड सो हियर वी आर फोकस्टिंग ऑन नैशनल मैग्रेसन ओनली सो 
नॅशनल मायग्रेशनचे स्वतःचे प्रकार आहेत आंतरराष्ट्रीय स्थलांतर आणि राज्यातलं स्थलांतर राज्यस्तरीय स्थलांतर स्टेट लेवल मायग्रेशन अँड इंटरस्टेट मायग्रेशन आता इंटरस्टेट मायग्रेशनला आपण एका मिनिट थोड्या वेळासाठी बाजूला ठेवू आपण जेव्हा जेव्हा तुम्ही स्टेट लेवल मायग्रेशनचा विचार करता सो ऑबियसली इन स्टेट लेवल देर आर अने पुन्हा त्याच्या ब्रांचेस आहेत स्टेट डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल मायग्रेशन रुरल टू रुरल लेवल मायग्रेशन अँड सिटी टू सिटी लेवल मायग्रेशन अँड ऑबियसली मग अशी वाचणाऱ्यांनी जसं सांगितलं तसं सीझनल मायग्रेशन दॅट मीन्स नीड बेस्ड मायग्रेशन फॉर एक्झाम्पल आता आपण रिसेंटली न्यूजमध्ये बऱ्याच पैकी बघितलं की ऊस कपासणी ऊस कापणी मजूर यांचं स्थलांतर जे आहे अशी स्थलांतर जी आहे ती नेट बेस्ड मायग्रेशन ज्याला आपण म्हणू किंवा सीझनल मायग्रेशन रुरल टू रुरल मायग्रेशन मध्ये ज्यांना ज्यांच्याजवळ स्वतःची जमीन नाही ते कुळ म्हणून दुसरीकडे शिफ्ट होतात बऱ्याचदा ग्रामीण टू ग्रामीण मायग्रेशन किंवा सिटी टू सिटी मायग्रेशन मध्ये महिलांचं मायग्रेशन विवाहामुळे होणारं सुद्धा येतं so here moral of the story the labor left their native place and moved towards whenever they will get their livelihood or employment and unemployment less wages uh, second better job opportunities or one other causes in village that caste based labor um, uh, job opportunity so overcoming out of the caste oriented job opportunities they moved towards the cities they moved obviously cities are modern more modern hence they thought that they would get better opportunity thus they could get better life so whenever we check the migrations corridor ॲक्च्युली स्थलांतरितांचे कॉरिडॉर जर तुम्ही तपासले तर तुम्हाला बऱ्यापैकी माहिती मिळते की कुठल्या स्टेटमधनं स्थलांतर मोठ्या प्रमाणावर होत आहे उत्तर प्रदेशातून हरियाणा दिल्ली गुजरात महाराष्ट्र या भागात मायग्रेशन जास्त आहे फ्रॉम बिहार हरियाणा महाराष्ट्र उत्तर प्रदेश अँड दिल्ली फ्रॉम वेस्ट बेंगॉल आंध्र प्रदेश कर्नाटका अँड केरला फ्रॉम ओरिसा गुजरात अँड केरला from mp delhi and maharashtra and from rajasthan gujarat and maharashtra so we technically hum log hamesha bolte hai bhaiya maharashtra to hamara bahut hi developed state hai rather than the other state of the uh, or with some states of the india par dekhiye maharashtra mein sabse jyada migration ye sare jagah se hota hai up bihar uh, then uh, mp Rajasthan. Okay. So these, I have collected this information from a migration corridor. Uh, I'll give you the link even. You can check it at the end of my speech. Okay. So, now this migration is in which field? In which area? So, see, mostly in construction field, then domestic work, then textile industry, brick industry, bricks industry, transportation mines and agriculture so these migrations migrated laborers became the major part of the infrastructure of our nation so this is the basic information about what is migration causes of the migration why my, why people migrated from their native place to the city area or urban area now we are going towards the problems of the migrators better wages better opportunity for getting better um, urban um, facilities these are the points motivational points behind their action so better pehla problem unka ye hai ki Uh, they migrated just because for jala apan marathi manu jagna sathi stalantar kiwa udar nirvah sathi stalantar yancha samasya problem hai kay kay most of the time they migrated because ek 
बंदा आपने बहुत सारे मूवी में देखा होगा कोई बंदा शहर से गांव आता है बोलता है चलो सिटी में मैं आपको अच्छा जॉब दिला दूंगा और इस तरीके से अनपढ़ गवार अशिक्षित जो कुछ करना चाह रहे हैं वो लोग उसके तरफ आकर्षित होते हैं बहुत सारी हिंदी मूवी में ये प्लॉट हमने देखा है और दे शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम देयर ओन विलेज टू सिटी अब यहाँ पे मेन प्रॉब्लम ये होता है कि इनको जिस तरीके के फील्ड में जॉब दिया जाता है ये जो फील्ड है ये अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर है ड्यू टू दैट अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर ऑब्वियसली प्रोटेक्शन कवर कवरेज जो है वो माइग्रेटेड माइग्रेशन को नहीं मिलता है स्थलांतरित कामगार को एक अस्वच्छ प्रदूषित वातावरण में काम करना पड़ता है बहुत सारे काम ऐसे होते हैं कि जिनके चलते उनका जीना असुरक्षित हो जाता है उनके आरोग्य की समस्याएं आती है और बहुत सारे प्रकल्प बहुत सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स ऐसे होते हैं जो प्रोजेक्ट में काम करने से एयर पोल्यूशन वाटर पोल्यूशन लेवल बहुत ज्यादा होता है ड्यू टू दैट उनको बहुत सारे रोग हो जाते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल लीवर के कुछ हो जाते हैं या लंग्स के कुछ बीमारियां हो जाती है बहुत बार इनको ऐसी जगह पे रहना पड़ता है जहां फुटपाथ होता है और कहीं कहीं तो खाली मैदान में इनको रहना पड़ता है और ऐसे में जो बेसिक फैसिलिटीज होती है देन अवेबिलिटी ऑफ क्लीन वाटर होता है या ड्रेनेज सिस्टम की अवेबिलिटी होनी है वो नहीं होता है ड्यू टू दैट दे बिकम इजीली टारगेटेड बाय द एपेडेमिक एक एग्जाम्पल मैं आपको देना चाहूंगी देखिए मलेरिया इज अ परमानेंट डिसीज ऑफ ओरिसा स्टेट वेन पर्सन माइग्रेटेड फ्रॉम ओरिसा टू अदर स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया वो अपने साथ ये डिसीज को भी माइग्रेट करके ले आता है डिसीज का भी माइग्रेशन हो जाता है सो so, ये एक प्रॉब्लम ऐसा है कि उनके ओन नेटिव प्लेस के डिसीजेस वो कैरी करके ले आते हैं ये इनके साथ एक बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है देन सेकेंड महिलाओं का स्थलांतर के बारे में जब हम बात करते हैं तो अपने नेटिव प्लेस से अपने रिलेटिव से बिछड़ के ये अपने पति के साथ जहां पे वो शिफ्ट हो रहा है वहां पे चली जा रही है और यहाँ पे उसको फैमिली प्रोटेक्शन नहीं मिलता है एल्डरली पर्सन फैमिली प्रोटेक्शन वो दूर हो जाती है ड्यू टू दैट जिसको हम डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस बोलते हैं ये डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस बढ़ा हुआ हमको मिलते हैं वेन एवर वी थिंक अबाउट द कंस्ट्रक्शन फील्ड मोर देन वन थर्ड लेबर आर वुमेन अब यहां पर हम जब आम्बेडकर थिंकिंग की बात करते हैं तो कौन सा भी भेदभाव नहीं होना है नॉट अ जेंडर वायस पर यहाँ पे जेंडर वायस होता है जेंडर के बेसिस पे इनको वेजेस में भी बहुत सारे प्रॉब्लम्स आते हैं एक सोशल सिक्योरिटी सिस्टम के एबसेंस में ये महिलाओं का शारीरिक और मानसिक आरोग्य खतरे में आ जाता है अब यहाँ पे माइग्रेटर्स जो है उनके साथ और भी प्रॉब्लम्स है वो प्रॉब्लम ये है कि कभी ये फैमिली के साथ माइग्रेट करते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली हस्बैंड के साथ वाइफ वाइफ के साथ बच्चे फाइनेंशियल कंडीशन अच्छी नहीं है एंड ड्यू टू दैट ऑब्वियसली ये पूरे कहीं तो भी रोड साइड ज्वेलर बन जाते हैं इनको पता नहीं है वो कितने दिन वहां रहने हैं इनके रहने की स्थिति कैसी रहने वाली है ये जो बच्चे हैं ये बच्चों को एजुकेशन से दूर रहना पड़ता है गवर्नमेंट हैज सो मेनी पॉलिसीज बट प्रॉब्लम इज देयर कि वो पॉलिसीज अवेल कितने लोग कर सकते हैं आरोग्य की समस्याएं है तो ये लोगों के लिए कोई भी हेल्थ सर्विसेस नहीं है ये बच्चे जो माँ बाप के साथ घुमक्कड़ हो गए हैं इनको अगर वो छह महीने रह रहे हैं तो वो लोकल एरिया में छह महीने एजुकेशन की कोई सुविधा उपलब्ध नहीं होती है दैट इज द बिग प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दिस माइग्रेटेड फैमिलीज अब इसके साथ एक साइकोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम भी इनके साथ हो जाता है ये अपने नेटिव प्लेस से दूर है एक नई एरिया में आए हैं नए कल्चर में आए हैं नई जगह है नई लाइफ है नए प्रॉब्लम्स है और इनके साथ कोप अप करना और रोज के अपने डेली वेजेस के काम करना इनके साथ ये एक बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम हो जाती है माइग्रेटेड जो माइग्रेशन करके जो आते हैं देखिए सीधा सीधे फैक्ट ये है 
local they got those jobs only or those uh, wages only those rejected by the local laborers local laborers jisko reject karte hain wohi migrated laborers ko diya jata hai in short nakari hui jitni bhi jobs hongi wo inko milti hai so aur uh, sarvajanik aarogya sevaye unke liye nahi hai ye mahilaon ke sath to bahut hi kharab ye ho jata hai ki ye mahilaon ko koi bhi लीगल प्रोटेक्शन लेबर एक्ट के अंतर्गत के लीगल प्रोटेक्शन नहीं है तो उनको मैटर्निटी लीव तक नहीं दी जाती अब आप बोलेंगे फैमिली के साथ शिफ्ट करने से ये प्रॉब्लम है सो देर आर सो मेनी प्रॉब्लम अगर फैमिली से ओनली एक आदमी शिफ्ट कर जाता है मेल मेंबर अगर माइग्रेट हो जाता है और पीछे घर में महिलाएं बच्चे और एडल्ट और एजेड ग्रुप रह जाता है तो वो मेल के अब्सेंस में वो घर का भौतिक और मानसिक समस्याओं की शुरुआत हो जाती है सो माइग्रेटेड लेबर की अलग समस्या है माइग्रेटेड लेबर की अगर अपने नेटिव प्लेस में फैमिली है तो उनकी अलग समस्या है यार अब ये माइग्रेटेड लेबर्स की और एक इम्पोर्टेंट एक इम्पोर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम ये है कि जो डॉक्टर वाग अंडरलाइन दैट प्रॉब्लम दैट दे डोंट हैव आइडेंटिटी कार्ड्स दैट ओख दस्तऐवजीकरण ज्यादा आधार आता आता बनाया लगल है गेल्या काही वर्षात बनायला लागलंय पण आधीपासून नाहीये आणि अजूनही बऱ्याच लोकांकडे नाहीये अँड अबसेन्स ऑफ दॅट आयडेंटिफिकेशन कार्ड उनको रेशन कार्ड नाही मिळतं अभि हम जो कोविड के बारे में बात कर रहे थे तो बहुत सारे लेबर्स ऐसे थे जिनके पास रेशन कार्ड नाही है और रेशन कार्ड नाही आहे करके गवर्नमेंट उनको ग्रेन्स नाही दे पा रही थी और फिर उसके लिए एक डिसिजन कुठ लिया गया है पर ये होना चाहिए कि रेशन एक बार अगर नेशनल आइडेंटिफिकेशन हो जाता है तो नेशनल आइडेंटिफिकेशन के साथ नेशन में वो कहीं भी शिफ्ट करे उसको उसके काम के साथ उसका रेशन कार्ड उसका जो गैस का कार्ड है या मेडिकल फैसिलिटी है बच्चों के एजुकेशन फैसिलिटी है देखिए ये सब नहीं हो सकता है जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ आइडेंटिफिकेशन ओळख दस्तावेजीकरण नाही आहे बँकेचे व्यवहार ते करू शकत नाही बँकेचे व्यवहार वो नाही कर सकते और ये सब क्यू है क्योंकि वो अपने नेटिव्ह प्लेस से दूर है दॅट इज द ओनली प्रॉब्लेम अँड बीइंग माइग्रेटेड लेबर वो कभी भी वोट देने का अपना अधिकार भी नाही पुरा कर सकते और जहा पे वो वोट नाही दे सकते वहा वो अपने प्रॉब्लेम्स अपने नेताओं के पास ले जाके भी नाही बता सकते सो दिस इज द मेजर प्रॉब्लेम जो कोई अंडरलाइन नहीं करता है ये कहीं भी हो इनके वोटिंग का एक कुछ तो भी रास्ता सरकार ने निकालना चाहिए जो कर, होने से ये अपने नेता को अपनी मजबूरिया बता सके पता नहीं पर नेता कितने सॉल्व करेंगे दैट इज दिन और एक प्रॉब्लम है बहुत बार कॉन्ट्रैक्टर बोल देता है आप शहर में आ जाओ मैं नौकरी दो दूंगा बेचारे ये गरीब लोग है नौकरी के चक्कर में चले आते हैं और एक बार घर से छूट जाने के बाद जो सामने आ रहा जो काम मिल रहा जो जो वेजेस पे मिल रहा करने के सिवा इनके पास कोई चारा नहीं होता वी हैव सो मेनी लेबर एक्ट देर आर सो मेनी प्रोविजन बट स्टिल यहाँ पे इनका वेतन कब कैसे काटा जा रहा है इनको नहीं पता चलता है इनके वर्किंग आवर्स किस तरीके से कम ज्यादा हो रहे हैं क्या वर्किंग आवर्स की एंट्री प्रॉपर हो रही कि नहीं हो रही ये ये लोग चेक नहीं कर सकते एंड ये इनकी बहुत बड़ी समस्या है these are the problems and just because they are poor they are illiterate they are migrated arjun ram meghwal ji ne ek me do 20 uh, 20 ko indian express ke ek article me kaha tha ki dr ambedkar and dr ambedkar ne bharat ke kamgaron ke haq samajik surakshitata ke liye ek base taiyar kiya tha inka ye jo essence of the article hai wo main aapko bata rahi hu और इनकी प्रेरणा से कामगारों का जीव मतलब लेबर का जीवन सुधारने के लिए असंगठित कामगारों को संरक्षण सुनिश्चित करने के लिए कुछ योजनाएं आई है और उनका कहना है योजना भले अभी आई हो पर इसका बेस डॉक्टर बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर जी ने तैयार किया हुआ है तो जैसे हम आज सुनते हैं श्रम योगी मानधन योजना फेब नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी में आई हुई है तो इसका भी बेस डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर जी के थॉट से लिया गया है गोलमेश परिषदेत किमान वेतन कामाच्या ठिकाणी किमान सुविधा शोषक जमीनदारांपासून शेतमजुरांच्या सुटकेचा प्रयत्न हे सगळं आंबेडकर यांनी केलं आहे तो इतिहास तुम्हाला सगळ्यांना माहिती आहे भूमिहीन शेतमजुरांसाठी गरीब कुळांसाठी शेतमजूर आणि मजुरांसाठी इंडिपेंडंट लेबर पार्टी त्यांनी स्थापन केली नाईन्टीन 
थर्टी सेवन मध्य खोटी सीस्टीम खोटी सीस्टीम ऑफ लैंड टेन्यूर को संपने बिल मान लगे नाइनटीन थर्टी सेवन मध्य इंडस्ट्रीयल डिस्प्यूट बिल एवड कारण नकार लेबर का संपा जाने का हक्क नकार गेला होता नाइनटीन फोर्टी टू फोर्टी सिक्स वाइसराय के एक्जिक्यूटिव काउंसिल मजूर संवेदना वारंवार दाखिला नाइनटीन फोर्टी थ्री ट्रेड युनियन लान्यता देने ट्रेड युनियन अमेन्डमेंट बिल पुढ़े आता हे सग के डॉक्टर संगीता मैडम योर साउंड इज म्यूट डॉक्टर संगीता मैडम हाँ थैंक यू इज इट ओके ना यस यस ओके बस जस्ट गिव मी टू मिनिट्स आई समझ सो दीज आर द प्रॉब्लम्स वी आर डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम्स एंड डॉक्टर वाघ ऑलरेडी कवर्ड सो मेनी प्रॉब्लम्स सो मीन्स आई कट ऑफ सम प्रॉब्लम्स उपाय योजना का सो so, जो जहां तक हम अंबेडकर जी की बात करते हैं तो अंबेडकर जी जहां तक हम लोगों को समझते हैं हमको तो इतना मालूम है कि वो इंसान को इंसानियत के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से देखने के लिए हमेशा तवज्जो देते हैं और ऐसे में हमें चाहिए कि लेबर भले ही इंडिया के कोई भी कोने में रहे उसको एक भारतीय नागरिक होने के सम्मान के तहत जो जो मिलना चाहिए वो मिलना चाहिए अगर सामाजिक सुरक्षितता है मिलनी चाहिए सामाजिक आरोग्य सुविधा है मिलनी चाहिए मिनिमम वेजेस है मिलने चाहिए मिनिमम फैसिलिटीज है मिलनी चाहिए सो so, यहाँ पे ये हो सकता है कि कॉन्ट्रैक्टर ठेकेदार भांडवलदार या जो कोई ओनर है मैंने आपको बता रही हूँ एक एग्जांपल है दिल्ली में मैंने ये देखा टू ईयर्स बैक एक मेहंदी निकालने वाले बच्चे को मैंने पूछा कि तुम एक दिन में कितना कमाते हो क्योंकि उसने एक हाथ के बोले हजार रुपए तो मैं बोली दो हाथ दिन में चार हाथ भी कर लो तो बहुत पैसे आ जाते हैं तो बोला नहीं आते हैं क्योंकि हमको गांव से जो आदमी लाया है वो एक रूम में दस लोगों को रखता है और दस लोगों को खाना पीना रहना सब करने के लिए वो हमको हर महीने सिर्फ छह हजार देता है घर भेजने के सो दिस इज द वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एक्सप्लाइटेशन ऑफ माइग्रेटेड लेबर मे बी इन मतलब ब्यूटी पार्लर्स एरिया सो एक सामान्य सुविधा निवास योजना दयाल पाजे सरकार ने ओख दस्तावेजी करना मोबिलिटी सा मतलब नुस्त आइडेंटिफिकेशन मार्क होकर चलेगा नहीं मोबिलिटी भी होनी चाहिए कंट्री में कहीं भी मूव करे वो काम करना चाहिए और उसके अंतर्गत हक्क और संरक्षण इनको मिलने चाहिए स्थलांतरित हिता रक्षण केन्द्र सरकार राज्य सरकार का आतिशय डिटेल मिनिमम वेजेस एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट इज देअर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लेबर एक्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी इज देअर इक्वल रेम्यूनरेशन एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सिक्स इज देअर इंडिया इज ऑल्सो मेम्बर ऑफ इंटरनेशनल लेबर ऑर्गनाइजेशन एंड बींग अ मेम्बर एज एक्सेप्टेड मेनी आई एल ओ रूल्स एंड रेग्युलेशन we have our own labor laws and policies indian constitution contains basic provisions and relating to the conditions of the employment non discrimination right to work etc for example article 23 uh, public one article 42 43 but still migrant labor face additional problems and just because they are both the labor and the migrants ओके सो मेरी इन्फॉर्मेशन मैंने कहा से कलेक्ट की वो मैं सोर्सेस आपको बता दू शोध गंगा इन्फिनेट सी इन चैप्टर थ्री यूरोटिकल बेस्ट फॉर द शेड्यूल कास्ट माइग्रेशन मेघना रेड्डी डिसेंबर थर्टी वन टू ट्वेंटी एटीन आर्टिकल टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया चैलेंजेस एंड ऑफ माइग्रेट इन द सिटीज टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया रीडर्स ब्लॉग आर्टिकल देन रिसर्च पेपर ऑफ सी एन इजेन ए स्टडी ऑन द इंटरनल माइग्रेट सिलेबस इश्यूज एंड पॉलिसी वॉल्यूम सिक्स issue for april 26 hrm copernicus worldwide journal dot com labor rights and labor standards for migrant laborers in india dr w n salve w w o r g w w or g g w w dot g v ka or labor and migration thank you me organizers che abar mante tani mala ya session la bolavle ani bolne chi sandhi dili tamal thank you
थैंक यू मैडम फॉर योर रिसोर्सफुल एड्रेस वंस अगेन थैंक यू फॉर द सेकंड सेशन थैंक यू चंद्रशेखर पाटिल सर हेलो मनी सर बिफोर बी मूव ऑन टू सेकेंड सेशन सम पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैव पोस्टेड फ्यू क्वेश्चन फॉर बोथ सर एंड डॉक्टर बेशा मैडम so with the permission uh, from research person we can discuss these questions uh, dr besham ma'am hmm. am i audible to you yeah ah uh, one question is there posted by rishi kumar on zoom and he says how much government of maharashtra is succeeded in problem solving migratory labor band kar did you get ma'am Hello, no, I am not getting it. Hello. Okay. How much government of Maharashtra hmm. is succeed in solving problems of migratory laborers? Hello. 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 Wasn't it audible? No. क्वेश्चन वाज इट वाज पोस्टेड बाय हेलो मेरा कुछ तो भी ये हो गया है मैम यू हैव आई मीन स्विच ऑफ योर ऑडियो एंड वीडियो बोल नो या हेलो हेलो यस हां आई कैन हियर बट आई कांट सी यू ओके शेयर स्क्रीन ओके एनीवे यस 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 यू यू कैन या Basically, the government of Maharashtra has come out with a very important plan to uh, overcome the problem of the COVID-19. One point, uh, uh, yeah. organization to a larger extent. Uh, therefore, I do know that at the various places, the government has come out with the various hospitals. For example, in Mumbai, the hospital has been created uh, of 1,000 bed in the big city, that is Bandra Kurla complex. and the government has also taken undertaken the various institutions places to uh, have this quarantine centers also so this is one of the important point that needs to be taken into cognizance so government is trying to do their level best in the municipalities in maharashtra and mumbai that we find that arsenic album 30 uh, the medicine has been given and also there are various uh, schemes are there uh for the benefit of these things and uh, in various municipalities the accounts officers are there they are been held uh, uh, responsible for that government has taken more and more uh, place into their hands so that this my, this corona positive patients will be uh, uh, placed over there and they will have this treatment over there so government is doing at their level best and the next point i would like to say is that government has come out with an advertisements in the newspaper which have been published in the local newspapers in lok satta maharashtra times many sarkar many other things that is in public domain where they are uh, recruiting the various uh, public health workers like doctors are there nurses are there and uh, ward boys and many things are there my point of contention and submission was only that they should come up with the permanent vacancies that are uh, required to be filled up in due course of time this was my submission but government is coming up again the issues of the ration was also there where they do not have the ration cards the government has issued orders to the talatis and all other places so that this can be uh, generated so uh, this is uh, a government where it is doing for the level best for the people they have analyzed what is the situation uh, they have made the contaminated zone red zone orange zone green zone so these zones are created in order to see that the corona does not spread from one place to another place so government is coming out with a very important uh, policy making uh, decisions so uh, so and so uh, is that the government is playing very important and decisive role and which is a positive role that we need to understand because they do have their own constraints but they are coming up with a very important policy uh, very all. quickly we have one to another question dr wag uh, yes. there are two questions i received one from uh, one anonymous uh, 
uh, I mean scholar, and another by Dr. Pratyek Bagde. But so I'm reading the first question. Both the questions are related and very important, and this is the reason why I'm tempted to bring you back on the table. Okay. So first question is: Do you feel that the current crisis will have an adverse impact on the laborers' uh, educational aspirants for their future generation? I mean. the labor okay. section and their future generation if it is impacting on their educational aspirations another question which is uh, in link to this one uh, posted by dr pratyek bagde madam on zoom zoom uh, question is in labor is there any uh, provision for migrant uh, sorry in labor law is there any uh, provision for migrant workers related to education to their child health facilities food security job security and voting power etc over to our okay friend. yeah the first important point i would like to say here is that jena sahas is an organization which is a delhi based organization they have carried out a survey in uh, in india now as per the survey it has it has it is revealed that the 92.5% uh, migrants have lost their jobs so the the humble submission over is that this migration issues are there in the society uh, but the important point is that the covid 19 we have faced the five different lockdowns in this particular period when it is a lockdown the trains are closed the buses are closed the road transport station is closed the supply chain is break up the, it is affecting our fiscal deficit it is affecting our G gdp and at this particular juncture of time the uh, the migrant workers have lost their jobs and they do have their problems of day to day needs as we have already seen on the tvs we have already seen on the various channels that the migrant workers are going from one place to another place why they are migrating to their village is a matter of question for us it is because they are not able to satisfy their basic needs they have come for the better employment in the cities everybody knows that see people from bihar they have come people from uttar pradesh people from various other places they have come to uh, mumbai maharashtra for example why the lakhs of people are migrating from this place to that place because they have lost their jobs there is a insecurity see those who are working in the public sector those who are working as the professors teachers those who are in the government sector they have a security of the pension they have the security of the salary even though it's a lockdown period but these people do not have any security and they have many issues again i have not discussed about the empirical data of the people those who do not have the houses and those who are living on the roads also those who are migrant workers they are the most vulnerable people so therefore we need to understand that definitely it has affected on the economy and definitely it has affected a larger extent that unemployment is created therefore i suggested that schemes like uh -huh. manasa needs to be implemented and the various schemes are there which are under the uh, direct action plan for the scheduled caste and direct action plan for the scheduled tribe which schemes like ramai ambedkar nivas yojana the ramai nivas yojana valmiki ambedkar nivas yojana and then the preparation of the roads are there so these schemes to be utilized and implement to be given to the depressed classes this is a humble submission to overcome this issue there are various schemes 331 schemes are there only for the scheduled caste under the central government and again state government has a different scheme so this is about the unemployment the second issue that was addressed here in the question is about uh, is basically about the educational sector yes education uh, there are various issues i would like to say here is that uh, basically uh, uh, the schedule caste schedule tribe people and the migrant people uh, those who have lost their job their children how they will fill up the fees for the uh, this one for for the admission in the first year exa examination the under graduation post graduation this is an issue so i the, the policy that can be uh, there for this is that they can term semester wise fees can be taken from the students this can be done because you know uh, if if the day to day uh, earnings are there for a person uh, those who are uh, those who are barbers those who are working in the those who have the seasonal employments now they do not have this in the two months period uh, no money is there they have lost their job there is job insecurity they will, they may not get the job also in future many issues are there at this particular juncture of time what can be done that semester wise fees fees, fees can be taken and somebody needs to be uh, given representation to the government stating that semester wise fees can be taken the entire fees i think many students cannot pay the fees because of the uh, economic issues and the problems uh, that are there and again one of the important issue was there uh, the survey was carried out and the news was published in the newspaper that 40% students do not have the access to the internet because you know day to day life uh, they do not have uh, below poverty line people how many are there in the maharashtra as per 2011 uh, documents that is published in uh, uh, vikas sachcha paul khana by government of maharashtra 
it says that 47% approximately 47% belonging to the scheduled caste are from the below poverty line if 47% are below poverty line from the scheduled caste that means that ki they are not uh, getting the particular earnings in their day to day life if they do not have the particular earnings in their day to day life can they have the uh, smartphones can they have the 10000 20000 40000 50000 mobile in their hand and they can access to these apps and every month they can access to this 400 300 rupees package of the internet for the idea and various other things so they cannot if they cannot then the how this internet education can be feasible to a larger extent to the student is also a question the government should come out with some schemes at this particular juncture of time as in the last time we have seen that some of the government has come up with the policy by way of giving them the laptops so under the special component plan or the direct action plan for the schedule caste and schedule tribe we do have a lot of money and lot of uh, expenses can be done i request uh, the august gathering to urge to the government that if the laptop was been given under the particular schemes then for the schedule caste and schedule tribe the laptops or the mobiles which are uh, the internet friendly user friendly laptops or tabs can be given if not laptop then tabs can be given that can uh, satisfy the needs of the students otherwise what will happen you know there was a poster in the whatsapp and the girl from the south india she was sitting on the terrace because not she was having the internet connectivity but she wanted to uh, study with that uh, this, this is this is very simple situation so the person in the gondwana the person in the gadchirili district how they can access to these uh, various uh, various things the tribal peoples for example they they do not they do not have the net also they do not have the connectivity also at this juncture of time when they are in nagpur university they are in bombay university they have the access to the internet but when they go back as the hostels are vacated and these hostels are given to the corona patients in the mini universities they have gone back to their villages and if there is no connectivity how they can study so this is an important point again the various universities are coming out with various methodologies for example mumbai university has come out with the me- mechanism of the moodle some other universities have come out the mechanism of the zoom students do not know how to apply zoom how to operate the moodle how to they need the uh, this one training the university is giving training to the faculties they are giving to the non teaching peoples but this training also needs to be given to the students also so uh, at a larger level if they all are available on the instagram and facebook such kind of a demo studios also a demo videos also can be given so that the students can be uh, having an access to that particular uh, particular videos and they can go ahead uh, this is one thing and the department should come out with a manual this is the last submission i would like to say okay, distance okay. education is there so distance education is having their own books and they are paying the money to the authors uh, 2000 rupees for one chapter and they have come up with that all the mechanism the books have been published such e books should be given to the students those who are the departments there are I very suggestions we need to wind up i think we need to wind up this session we are running short of time thank you very much for your insight you, in the subject you. and uh, you uh, answered very well to the question i read out from the post thank you very much sir now uh, i request vani sir to please take over the proceeding of second session thank you over to vani sir hello thank you sandesh wak sir thank you dr bhote sir thank you chandrashekar patil sir i welcome you all again in this second session of national webinar the theme of this session is effects of covid-19 on indian foreign policy for this session we have with us dr sailendra devlankar as a resource person dr mohan kasikar as the moderator of the session and chairperson of the entire webinar dr madhukar rao wasnik ex mlc i warmly welcome again both the speakers and chairperson on behalf of the college talking about the theme we all are aware that this pandemic has proved terrible to the world economy besides economic equations the pandemic affected socio political conditions in each country so also it affected international relations amongst the many countries the europe and america are highly affected of this pandemic and suffer greater number of casualties this is the real testing time to each country to bring about cooperation and sustainable development in diplomatic relations 
at this juncture now world required understanding amongst the countries for health service technology and liberal democracy similarly at it was accepted as atlantic charter after world war 2 this particular session will throw a light on indian foreign policy especially during and after the pandemic situation to discuss the present theme of the session we have invited dr shailendra devlankar who is professor department of political science government vidarbha institute of science and humanities amravati dr devlankar studied from savitribai phule university of pune and jawaharlal nehru university new delhi he won the gold medal for ma from pune university and jnu vice chancellor's appreciation for his mphil dissertations presently he is director of government pre ias training institute amravati he is recipient of many prestigious awards and recognitions in his successful career he has 16 books to his credit and published 18 research paper he has also published 150 popular articles in newspapers and magazines he is a popular resource person and delivered about 200 public lectures so far he is also invited in different national and international seminar and conferences as a resource person he is recognized guide in three different universities and external referee in jnu and central university of gujarat for mphil he has evaluated around 30 phd and mphil dissertations so far with this brief introduction i now call upon dr sailendra devlankar to deliver his address over to dr sailendra devlankar sir please proceed hello good afternoon to everyone uh am i enough audible i mean uh, if uh, all the participants yes, are sir. able to hear yes, me yes you audible very much audible yes okay yes. thank you very much uh, uh, at the outset i am really thankful to the organizer of this national webinar for uh, inviting me to this uh, uh, important event as uh, the webinar is being organized by the history department uh, but since a person belongs to the stream of international relation and foreign affairs he has also been invited so this is a great example of an interdisciplinary uh, approach which now is very important and now uh it's a sign of a day also uh so uh, the topic which has been given to me is uh, how this covid 19 will impact on indian foreign policy uh and even how will it impact on uh, the international relations how it will impact on uh, the national behavior of almost all the states uh and this is a very important topic because of course i mean this covid 19 will going to have uh its great impact on the foreign policies of the nation uh it is going to change the discourse of international relation from various perspectives and uh, it may not be possible for me to cover all these issues uh, maybe in a span of half an hour uh but uh, i will try my level best to touch upon uh some some important developments and realities which are coming up uh, and now started giving their hints probably this uh, all uh, signs will or realities will get enlarged in coming time and we will have to cope up with these realities uh, accordingly we will have to make certain changes in our uh, foreign policies also uh, of course uh, i mean uh, this uh, we, we are mentally also prepared and we have already started you know preparation uh, from the economic perspective also uh, i am uh, again thankful uh, to this uh, chairperson of this session uh, my friend my senior professor mohan kashikar uh, who is head of the department uh, in, in uh, rashtra sant tukuru ji maharaj uh, nagpur university uh, and uh, i will again start my session so uh, I, before you know starting this session i just had a brief discussion with the organizer and uh, of course most of the participants uh, i mean in this webinar belongs to maharashtra and this is being little bit a technical issue 
so i will with the request of the chair also and with the request of the uh, i mean again from this request to the organizer i will try to be trilingual instead of uh, you know sticking to english language uh, because otherwise sticking to english language and delivering in message in one language is comparatively easier for me but in order to facilitate the message or to disseminate the message properly uh, i will try to use three language formula that is hindi marathi and english also uh, uh, so so participants are from uh, out of maharashtra as well so if you could uh, better go with hindi and english okay thank you very much thank you very much for the suggestion thank you sir and uh, yeah Uh, so now at the spur of moment i mean uh, some new realities which in, which is cropping up uh, i think just we will have an outlook uh, of that the first being uh, the some some trends which are you know, you know coming up the first important trend that we are witnessing uh, is a trend of protectionism and this protectionism is a very important trend and now it has almost uh, become a part of foreign policy of almost Uh, all the uh, nation states i mean in the international community there are 193 nation states and uh, now most of these uh, nation states in fact they were under a broad umbrella of uh, uh, globalization but now as we have seen in this uh, the corona crisis in fact most of the nation states are alleging this corona crisis because corona crisis is an imported issue and they alleged to the process of globalization that the process of globalization attributed this corona crisis because of this process of globalization nations are suffering uh, i mean uh, from this type of pandemic even the same type of feeling we are witnessing in india also uh, that i mean most of the indians now of course i mean we are in the process of unlocked but almost we have undergone through the four phases of uh, lockdown and the, 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 the indians they have this larger sentiments among themselves that we, we in fact we, we we have no fault and why 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 are we suffering from this type of uh, uh, um, uh, you know punishment it is it can call as a punishment also so this is all imported because uh, corona has not uh, you know emerged in india it is an imported uh, type of virus and so it has it has it has come to india through the process of uh this globalization and now most of the states are alleging the process of globalization i will come down to that point little late lekin ye jo bada important aur aham issue hai ki abhi nations i mean that the, this corona virus is becoming global and global uh, after every passing day and the nations are becoming inverse now see that jab global corona global band raha hai nations are becoming inverse ओके okay, वो ज्यादा ज्यादा कंजर्वेटिव बनने लगे हैं प्रोटेक्शनिस्ट बनने लगे हैं और दे दे आर थिंकिंग अबाउट देमसेल्फ ओनली आई मीन सी द ट्रेंड आई मीन आई विल साइट यू कपल ऑफ एग्जांपल्स फॉर एग्जांपल इन अमेरिका रिसेंटली अमेरिका हैज गिवन वन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टू जर्मनी वो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है मेडिसिन को या वैक्सीन को डिवाइस करने का या उसको बनाने का एंड द कंडीशन विच अमेरिका हैज पुट फोर टू जर्मनी इज दैट कि जब वी विल प्रिपेयर दिस वैक्सीन दिस वैक्सीन फर्स्ट विल बी यूज्ड बाय अमेरिका एंड देन दिस वैक्सीन विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एज पर द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अमेरिका सो ये हमें इसमें दिखाई देता है कि एवरी नेशन इज थिंकिंग ऑफ इट्स ओनली नाउ दे हैव मोस्ट ऑफ द नेशन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द नेशन क्लोज डाउन देर बॉर्डर यूरोपियन यूनियन जो था एज वी नो दैट आई मीन आई मीन देर आर सेवरल मेंबर्स ऑफ यूरोपियन यूनियन और वो स्मॉल स्टेट्स है सारे Uh, लेकिन उन्होंने भी अपने बॉर्डर शट डाउन कर दिए है इनफैक्ट अमेरिका हैज अ वेरी क्लोज टाइज विद द यूरोप बट अमेरिका वॉज द फर्स्ट टू टूक द डिसीजन एंड देन दे बैंड द फ्लाइट फ्रॉम यूरोप सो एवरी नेशन हैज बिकम इनवर्ड नाउ दे आर थिंकिंग ऑफ देमसेल्फ ओनली तो ये जो ट्रेंड था दैट ट्रेंड इज एक्चुअली डेट्रीमेंटल टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन वो ट्रेंड जो है दैट वी कॉल आर विटनेस इन द प्रोटेक्शनिज्म everyone is trying to protect uh, protect their policies protect their interest okay and try to be cut off from the nation ye sabse important aspect hai and that is what we are witnessing the second important aspect uh, the trend which is coming up is a xenophobia xenophobia is a, is a process when we hate the people from other state uh, now this is a negative term in fact which was prominent before the second world war 
uh, and this was uh, this term was popularly used when uh, i mean the nations or i mean probably some nations used to hate the jews and that time the uh, this term uh, i mean xenophobia came into force but now it was almost a history but now this xenophobia process is again taking shape uh, in this covid 19 and now people are started hating i mean you take the example of india i mean uh, they have a strong resentment anger discontentment as far as uh, i mean uh, this uh, china is concerned and now uh, i mean out of this anger and discontentment now there is a huge and colossal demand to ban on the chinese goods i mean whether it is feasible or not we will see it little later but there is a huge demand and this anger i mean um, there, there are some instances when even the chinese citizens have been attacked in europe also in america also so this process of xenophobia is again star uh, is on rise and it's taking shape and the third important aspect is of course the hyper nationalism uh, this hyper nationalism is again uh, as we, we we are witnessing in almost major powers and out of this hyper nationalism the hyper nationalism has emerged out of this domestic politics also and for that i will cite the uh, ongoing india china uh, this conflict on the, uh, this border issue especially in the east ladakh and uh, as far as this border issue is concerned why china has suddenly uh, provoked uh, this border issue what 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 prompted china in fact china is also suffering through this uh, covid 19 and china also knows that the entire world is suffering through the covid 19 but why unnecessarily china embarked on this border conflict so there is a reason uh, of china's domestic politics and that domestic politics is that uh, there is a wider feeling among the chinese people that xi jinping uh, is actually failed to handle the corona crisis in fact she also you know failed to deliver uh, some some remedies for this economic problem china has suffered equally china has equally suffered uh, economic losses because of this corona crisis and this the crisis has also taken the toll of uh, chinese industries almost 50% of chinese industries uh, had been shut down now this all are opening up but of course i mean china is also suffering uh, through this corona crisis and now the most of the nations like the leader like the xi jinping is trying to divert the attention of the people from these basic miseries and that's the reason why they are provoking or unnecessarily triggering or instigating the public feeling on the national issues like sovereignty border problem and that is what we are witnessing that china has become more assertive more aggressive not only in case of india china border but in case of uh, south china sea also they have issues with the taiwan that has become now really very hot they have issues with the hong kong now recently they came out with a uh, with a law in their uh as uh, in their parliament and that is a national security law for hong kong why this suddenly china is taking all this decision so this is again a type of you know mobilizing people on some emotional appeals like nationalism sovereignty protection of sovereignty protection of borders so it's not the case of china only even in case of america also as you know that in america elections are around the corner i mean the entire nation is now in the process of preparing for the presidential election and donald trump is trying to instigate all these issues like they are he is alleging uh, china for all this mess with this corona mess and now uh, you know there is a widespread anger among the uh, chinese people also uh, sorry american people as far as this corona crisis and uh, the way they are alleging the china even in same case we are what the process we are witnessing in india that in india uh, there is an increasing demand to ban the chinese good i mean there were some processions also i mean recently one uh, protest uh, occurred in pune when uh, uh, some some a group of people uh, they break down the chinese mobiles so that was also one part that we uh, witnessed uh, uh, recently so this is again a feeling of nationalism this hyper nationalism which is actually taking the toll of the process of globalization which also we are witnessing taking shape uh, in this uh, process of globalization so this process of globalization which really an unprecedented development i mean the world has not witnessed this side, uh, type of colossal uh, this um, uh, material and human life uh, ever since the second world war in fact exactly after 100 years back there was a spanish flu 
in 1918 and which almost uh, you know took the uh, the life of 5 crore people and after that now what the world is witnessing this unprecedented uh, development and the world is really was not prepared uh, for this type of uh, eventuality and that's the reason uh, i mean for several reasons that they are for nations they are still not come out or still not able to cope up with this type of scenario so now we will look at how this process of globalization will survive uh, in this uh, corona pandemic time or after this corona pandemic time as we know that the process of globalization which is now a uh, very prominent uh, i mean up to this corona crisis and which the process of globalization which took the shape after the second world war and in fact uh, the nations looked at the process of globalization as a medicine or as a what we can say as a as a panacea uh, for uh, for this poverty elevation uh, for this um, problem of unemployment also and most of the nations they involved themselves in the process of globalization this process of globalization uh, almost after 30 years back it took the shape of uh, economic globalization now most of the nations i mean they are interdependent on the other uh, ye jo process hai itna zyada strong ban gaya tha 30 years mein now this corona crisis is taking the toll of the process of globalization aur ye process hai now it is under attack uh, so ye hyper nationalism ke karan protectionism ke karan ye jo process hai globalization ka now it is facing severe challenges but it is very important that for the welfare of the entire uh, international community the process of globalization has to survive uh, but now the nations need to come together and really uh, seriously ponder over this important aspect that how to you know uh, protect the process of globalization then this process of globalize uh, this uh, entire corona crisis has once again challenged uh, this uh, multilateral institutions or liberal institutionalism ab ye jo liberal institutionalism ka concept hai which has become again very strong dominant uh, after this uh, second world war uh, ye is ke under i think we have we are witnessing that the united nation came into existence and then there were several, several multilateral organizations uh, like imf is also there world bank is also there and now what we are witnessing har ek subcontinent mein ek trade block hai like i mean if you start from the far east there is apec then there is asean there is a sarc then uh, we have this uh, opec and then uh, we have this european union uh, yeah, there are i mean we have the brics we have this uh, shanghai cooperation organization so now regional blocks and the multilateral groups are now become very very important up to this uh, time but the entire corona crisis has challenged this liberal institutionalism has challenged this multilateral institutions why this they, 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 i mean the process has challenged the reason is simple now most of this organization even the united nations also and regional blocks they have almost become redundant in this covid process now if you ask that united nations is the world's largest multilateral organization which consists of 193 states i mean they they are the members but what united nations have so far done uh, to 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 contain or to fight with this corona crisis they have not done nothing they have done nothing except one session of security council and in that session in fact they deliberated this issue and then uh, when when very idealistic type of uh, i mean then the resolution they come out ki is time mein sabne ek ek aake usko fight karna chahiye and that was the only resolution take the example of g20 what g20 has done Uh, in this corona crisis what g7 has done in this corona crisis even in the even if you can take the example of european union they have not done substantially uh, to face or to help the nations to fight the minas of corona collectively to ye baat humko nazar aa rahi hai ki multinational institutions jo hai ye multilateral institutions now they are losing their relevance even the trade blocks are losing their relevance now up to this uh, corona crisis The, the nation's identity was based on their membership with these groups agar india asean ka member ho jata hai to india ka stature ban bad jayega agar india aur koi important organization ka member ban jata to india ka stature ban jayega because the stature or status of this multilateral groups was bigger and larger than the nation state is tarah se unka jo influence tha wo bad gaya tha lekin now what we are witnessing the nation states have once again become important 
एंड मल्टीलेटरल ग्रुप आर टेकिंग द बैक सीट और ये सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है Even in case of World Health Organization, the World Health Organization is primarily responsible uh, to fight this Corona virus. And as we every day, I mean, the World Health Organization, I mean, keep on giving us the instruction that we all people, as an ordinary citizen, we follow the uh, individual instructions to fight with this Corona crisis. But the 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 World Health Organization, which was known, recognized uh, for its uh, neutrality, for its independence. have lost its credibility during this corona crisis now this entire in last 6 months when the corona crisis is taking shape i mean this entire world health organization has almost acting like a, a, a like an a, like an pro or public relation office of china i mean in november in fact this corona crisis when it actually emerged now there are different type of reports which are coming up uh, recently the harvard medical school has come out with a uh, very shocking revelations and accordingly the corona crisis first appeared in china in almost one year back in august uh, 2019 but china hid the information uh, and in fact china disclosed it in the month of december in fact china uh, did not even inform uh, the uh, the world health organization in fact china violated 2005 world health organization directives that in case of any a virus related disease the nation need to inform the world health organization but china hide the information and there was no transparency in the behavior of china in fact recently uh, the first case of corona which detected in china in the month of november uh, and the china detect, uh, china revealed it uh, to the world in month of december sorry in month of january almost so in that case during this time uh, china was making some false claims the first false claim was that uh, that uh, corona crisis is is is, is, a, is it has not uh, is not a human to human transmitted disease and that was a very uh, you know false misleading statement made by the china but unfortunately the world health organization endorsed that statement and whatever china was uh, you know telling during this time the world health organization was blindly accepting those claims so china world health organization was acting as if as an instrument of chinese foreign policy and there were reasons i mean the first reason was that the the present director general of world health organization mr tedros i mean when he got elected in 2017 china uh, played a very important role in his election and that was a very important aspect and that's the reason why the entire organization is now taking side of china and that's the reason why america uh, of course i mean moved out of this uh, uh, important organization now who has become a platform for fight platform to fight and now it is a platform to score, settle the score among the major powers now it has been a platform to fight uh, a very important fight which is going on between uh, this uh, i mean uh, china and america now the who has totally uh, changed its shape it has lost its credibility so entire multilateral organizations are under the crisis due to this corona crisis and this is a very important development that the nations will have to face because this multilateral organizations they were very important to facilitate the international trade they were very important to facilitate the economic globalization they were actually that important uh, i mean that we call as jisko hum kadi kehte hain ki jisme economic globalization ke liye zaruri tha now this entire process is under uh, attack so what we are witnessing the process of globalization then the multilateral institutions they are also under attack and then the third important very uh, trend which is now coming up that this process of uh, your, you know the globalization is now uh, will probably affect on the legal migration also now the legal migration is very important aspect as almost uh, most of the indians always try to go to america and now try to pursue the american education they want to enroll in american universities uh, at the spur of moment there are 40 lakhs indians now we have we, we are now settled down in america out of that uh, 17 lakhs indians have got their uh, this green card like the, they, they have become the citizen of america almost lakhs is in queue and they have applied for, to become the citizen of america so this process of uh, corona crisis has negatively 
impacted on the legal migration also now legal migration is again it is becoming a very important issue now uh, nations have closed down their borders they are still reluctant uh, to open up their air space also uh, so uh, and even uh, donald trump has given some hints that probably this all corona crisis they will have to rethink over the uh, h1b visa also and again the legal migration from india so this is not just case pertain to india and america now it has almost become a trend in all the states so this is a very important aspect that we need to understand as far as uh, uh, this corona crisis is concerned and then the last point which i would like to make is regarding that how the corona crisis is taking tail of uh, taking toll of uh, the entire uh, supply chain of the uh, world now it has really affected now see why the supply chain of the globe, uh, globe uh, has been affected because of this corona crisis as we know that china constituted almost 50% of this global supply chain uh when sars emerged in china in 2003 uh, that time uh, china's uh, you know part in the global gdp was almost 8% okay so that time when sars was also very serious like corona but that time it did not affect on the global supply chain but today china constituted almost 20% of global gdp and that's the reason why uh, the global uh, supply chain has been affected and even in case of i mean most of the manufacturing units which are settled in uh, america and europe they they they, they, they takes their uh, raw material from china even in case of pharmaceutical industry i will cite you a very important aspect uh, almost 100% american medicines they, they 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 i mean they, they get their manufacturers unless and until china gives them this raw material अमेरिका में आज की घड़ी में जो भी एंटीबायोटिक्स यूज किए जाते हैं 100% चाइना से आते हैं इवन इन यूरोप ऑल्सो द सिनेरियो इज सेम अगर इफ यू टेक द एग्जांपल ऑफ इंडिया ऑल्सो ऑलमोस्ट 70% ऑफ इंडियन फार्मास्यूटिकल कंपनी और इंडस्ट्री इज डिपेंड ऑन द इंपोर्ट ऑफ एपीआई फ्रॉम चाइना एपीआई माने के एक्टिव फार्मास्यूटिकल इंग्रेडिएंट्स आपको कोई दवाई बनानी है तो आपको दो चीजों की बहुत बड़ी जरूरत होती है एक तो उसका जो एक्टिव फार्मास्यूटिकल इंग्रेडिएंट्स होते हैं और दूसरा की स्टार्टिंग फैक्टर्स होते हैं ये दोनों के कारण आप मेडिसिन बना सकते हो आज भी इंडिया में हमारा जो फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री है ऑलमोस्ट 70 परसेंट जो है हम एपीआई चाइना की तरफ से इंपोर्ट करते हैं लास्ट ईयर वी इंपोर्टेड फिफ्टी थ्री एपीआई फ्रॉम चाइना एंड वी पेड चाइना ऑलमोस्ट फाइव बिलियन डॉलर फॉर द सेम चाइना हैज डेवलप सिस्टमेटिकली ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ लास्ट वन डिकेड टू बिकेम a very prominent part of global supply chain aaj ke time mein steel ho aluminium ho agar aap aap jo acs hum use karte hai in our household almost 80% of world's uh, ac production attributes to china 80% ac world ki china banata hai almost agar mobile ki baat karu to 70% mobile world ki china banata hai usi ke time mein even in case of india also as we know that uh, almost worth 57 billion dollars goods are being sold in indian market hamare market mein bhi aaj 60% mobile hum jo indians use karte hain wo chinese mobiles hain to china ne ye pure 10 saal mein logon ko apne mein itna dependent banwaya itna dependent banwaya aur china converted itself into the manufacturing hub aur ye manufacturing hub ke karan unka industry jo pura economy export oriented economy hai mass scale pe production karte hain aur uska export karte hain और लोगों को यह पता नहीं था कि आने वाले टाइम में उनको कोरोना क्राइसिस का सामना करना पड़ेगा इसलिए दे वेर ऑफकोर्स इन इन टाइप ऑफ इल्यूजन और इसलिए लोग काफी डिपेंडेंट बन गए चाइना पे नाउ द वर्ल्ड इज रीथिंकिंग ओवर दिस सप्लाई चेन जो ओवर डिपेंडेंस है चाइना पे नाउ दे आर रीथिंकिंग ओवर इट एंड दैट द रीजन वाई आई मीन मोर देन थाउजेंड कंपनीज मल्टीनेशनल कॉर्पोरेशन आर मूविंग आउट ऑफ चाइना जापान ने तो ऑलमोस्ट टू बिलियन डॉलर्स का पैकेज डिक्लेयर किया है शिंजो एबे ने कि जो कंपनी चाइना से निकलकर बाहर आना चाहती है उनके रिहेबिलिटेशन के लिए रिसेटलमेंट के लिए चाइना हैज ऑफर्ड जापान हैज ऑफर्ड द पैकेज सेम इज अ केस एट द स्पोर ऑफ मूवमेंट चाइना इज हैविंग नाइन लैख मल्टीनेशनल कारपोरेशन नाइनटीन में चाइना के पास में एक भी मल्टीनेशनल कारपोरेशन नहीं था और आज के घड़ी में चाइना में नाइन लाख मल्टीनेशनल कॉर्पोरेशन है बिकॉज ये क्यों रिवोल्यूशन हुआ बिकॉज लास्ट थर्टी इयर्स में 
चाइना ने अपने आप को बड़ा सिस्टमेटिकली डेवलप किया है मैं एक छोटा एग्जाम्पल आपको देता हूँ इवन इफ आपको अगर एक फैक्ट्री लगानी है मोबाइल कंपनी की तो आपको उसके लिए जो जो चीजें चाहिए जो प्लास्टिक मटेरियल चाहिए बैटरी चाहिए आपको मोबाइल का जो चिप चाहिए वो सारी चीजें अगर आप इंडिया में करना चाहते हो तो यू विल हैव टू इम्पोर्ट दिस थिंग फ्रॉम डिफरेंट सिटीज आपको कहाँ कहाँ से उस चीज को लाना पड़ेगा लेकिन इन केस ऑफ चाइना लाइक टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वुहान वुहान में देर आर इंडस्ट्रियल पार्क ये इंडस्ट्रियल पार्क में एक ही जगह पर आपको हर चीज मिल जाएगी चाइना हैज डन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चाइना डेवलप इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वेरी वेल उनके पास रोड बढ़िया है कंस्ट्रक्शन बढ़िया है लैंड जो है वो लैंड इजीली अवेलेबल है दैट इज नॉट अ केस इन इंडिया ऑल्सो लैंड वहां पर बड़ी इजीली आपको हजारों एकड़ लैंड इजीली मिल जाती है देन यहाँ पर जिस तरह का ब्यूरोक्रेटाइजेशन है परमिशन देने के लिए वो चाइना में नहीं है चाइना यू कैन इजिली गेट द परमिशन वॉट एवर इज रिक्वायर्ड टू इंस्टॉल अ प्लांट इन चाइना वहां पर वो आपको चीजें मिलती इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज कंपेरिटिवली चीपर क्योंकि चाइना में डैम्स बहुत ज्यादा है आई मीन इफ इन केस इन इंडिया में हमारे पास ढाई से तीन डैम्स है चाइना में 65,000 डैम्स है तो उनके पास इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेशन बहुत मैसिव लेवल पर है एंड कनेक्टिविटी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड देन द चाइनीज लेबर इज हाईली स्किल्ड लेबर तो ये जो चाइनीज स्किल्ड लेबर है ये ज्यादा मायने रखता है अगर इंडिया में एक लेबर दिन का कोई को एक आधा यूनिट 40 यूनिट बनाता होगा तो वही लेबर चाइना में वो हंड्रेड यूनिट बनाएगा बिकॉज वो स्किल डेवलपमेंट पे उन्होंने बहुत ज्यादा इन्वेस्टमेंट किया है So that's the reason why China has developed and now become the center of manufacturing hub of the world. वो बड़ा systematic determined efforts था China का. Now it has converted itself into this manufacturing hub. Now the important question which is now arising: the world is thinking, rethinking over the supply chain. And now the companies which are moving out, can India attract those companies? Now this is very important. हम ये देखना चाहते हैं कि can COVID-19 can turn this a blessing into disguise ye jo bada pure negative scenario hai isme is there any ray of hope for india kya india is sab scenario ko catch kar sakta hai kya to can we attract these companies to ye cheezon ko rakhna zaruri hai because in this case we can't become the emotional hame emotional ban ke nahi sochna padega we will have to be practical ki kya india mein land easily mil sakta hai no this is not possible because land reform bill is still pending in our parliament हमारी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेशन देखो एक तो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेशन कम है उसके बाद में इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज कॉस्टली एज पर एज लेबर इज कंसर्न ऑफकोर्स आई मीन देर आर देर आर लॉट ऑफ इश्यूज एज पर एज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट इज कंसर्न अवर सिटीज आर नॉट दैट वेल कनेक्टेड तो हम ट्राई जरूर कर सकते हैं बट इट डजेंट मीन दैट की जो भी कंपनी चाइना से बाहर निकलेगी वो हमारे पास प्लांट लगाएंगे बिकॉज देर आर आसियान कंट्रीज लाइक वियतनाम लाइक कम्बोडिया लाइक इंडोनेशिया लाइक मलेशिया These people have equally developed good infrastructure, and now they are attracting companies. अगर आप जापान का एग्जाम्पल लो तो जापान के जो भी कंपनी चाइना से अभी बाहर आ रहे हैं वो वियतनाम में अपना प्लांट लगा रहे हैं बिकॉज दे आर ऑफरिंग दिस टाइप ऑफ यू नो इंसेंटिव टू द कंपनीज लाइक इंडोनेशिया में हम रिबॉक का शूज यूज करते हैं ये रिबॉक का शूज कहाँ बनता है ये अमेरिका में थोड़ी बनता है ये रिबॉक का शूज इंडोनेशिया में बनता है अच्छा ये रिबॉक का फैक्ट्री इंडोनेशिया में क्यों चला गया Because they announced tax holidays, उन्होंने रिबॉक को कहा कि आपको दस साल तक कोई टैक्स देने की जरूरत नहीं है आप आओ प्लांट लगाओ नाउ दे आर ऑफरिंग दिस टाइप ऑफ इंसेंटिव हमें भी इस तरह के पैकेजेस को इस तरह की इंसेंटिव को हमको डिक्लेयर करना पड़ेगा अगेन इंडिया हैज अ वेरी ह्यूज एडवांटेज ऑफ द डोमेस्टिक मार्केट अगर आप इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स का देखोगे तो हमारा डोमेस्टिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स का मार्केट फिफ्टी बिलियन डॉलर का है लेकिन हम कहा से सारी चीजें लेते हैं चाइना से लेते हैं यूरोपियन कंपनी से लेते हैं हम साउथ कोरिया से लेते हैं सैमसंग हो वर्लपुल हो लेकिन जो हमारा मार्केट है उसको हमको कैच करना पड़ेगा और ये अगर हम जब तक नहीं करेंगे तो हमारे लिए बड़ा डिफिकल्ट रहेगा देन वी हैव टू चेंज अवर माइंड सेट ऑल्सो अभी नाउ देर इज अज डिमांड विच इज ऑन द राइज दैट बैन चाइनीज गुड बैन चाइनीज गुड इस चीज में भी हमको बिल्कुल इमोशनल नहीं होना चाहिए हमें ये देखना चाहिए कि कौन से ऐसे चाइनीज गुड्स है कि जिसको हमको बैन करना चाहिए वी कैन कैन नॉट इंप्लीमेंट द ब्लैंकेट बैन ऑन ऑल द चाइनीज गुड्स ये ख्याल में रखिएगा 57 बिलियन डॉलर्स के गुड्स चाइना के गुड्स हमारे पास बेचे जाते हैं लेकिन ऐसी चीजें जो इंडिया में बन सकती है फॉर एग्जांपल हमारे दिवाली के जो कंदील जिसको हम बोलते हैं दिवाली के लैंटन जिसको कहते हैं वो लैंटन हमको चाइना के प्लास्टिक के लेने की क्या जरूरत है कांट वी मेक अवर ओन अर्दन आई मीन कैंडल्स इन इंडिया वो हम कर सकते हैं अगर हम गणपति के स्टैचूज हम वहां से मंगाने के बाद हम यहाँ पर उसको कर सकते हैं 
अब टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मोबाइल फोन हमें क्या जरूरत है दस बारह टाइप के चाइनीज मोबाइल फोन को यूज करने की उसके बदले में हम यहाँ के कुछ मोबाइल कंपनीज हो सकते हैं कि जिसको हम वी कैन मेक यूज ऑफ इट कई सारे इंडियन कंपनीज हैं जो जैसे माइक्रोमैक्स जैसा एक मोबाइल कंपनी था तो वो जिट वॉज इंडियन कंपनी लेकिन वो चाइनीज इतना जबरदस्त इन्फ्लुएंस होगा इंडिया में वो कंपनी नाउ ऑलमोस्ट डेट बिकम हिस्ट्री तो इस तरह से हम सोच सकते हैं लेकिन अगर कोई रॉ मटेरियल हमको यूरोप से बिकॉज वी आर चॉइस चाइनीज माल लेना है रॉ मटेरियल लेना है या यूरोपियन लॉ मटेरियल लेना है लेकिन हमारा जो मैन्युफैक्चरर है उसको अगर चाइना का रॉ मटेरियल कंपेरेटिवली चीपर रेट में मिल रहा है कंपेयर टू द यूरोपियन रॉ मटेरियल तो उसको वो करना चाहिए अदरवाइज हमारे जो स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज है जो अभी चाइना पे बहुत डिपेंडेंट है नाउ दे विल कम इन टू क्राइसिस हम इमीजिएटली उसको नहीं बंद कर सकते सो so, हमको फेज वाइज जाना पड़ेगा आई मीन सम सॉफ्टवेयर से जिसको हमको अभी जरूरत हो भी नहीं सकती है लाइक like टिकटॉक जैसी चीजें है लाइक uh, like, uh, बहुत सारे ऐसे सॉफ्टवेयर है जिसके बारे में वी कैन रीथिंग जैसे पेटीएम uh, जैसी चीज है स्विगीज है ये हम जो अब खाना वगैरह सब सारी चीजें ऑर्डर करते हैं तो वी कैन ऑलवेज रीथिंक ओवर इट बट हमें स्टेप बाई जाना पड़ेगा इन द फर्स्ट स्टेप वट वी कैन डू इज दैट आई मीन वी कैन मूव अवे फ्रॉम द चाइनीज सॉफ्टवेयर देन इन द सेकेंड स्टेप हम हार्डवेयर के बारे में सोच सकते हैं एंड द थर्ड स्टेप जो रॉ मटेरियल हम चाइना के पास से लेते हैं उसके बारे में वी कैन थिंक ओवर इट सो फॉर इंडिया दू एंटायर कोरोना क्राइसिस ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ ब्लेसिंग इन डिस गाइज इफ इंडिया कैन टेक इट यू नो पॉजिटिवली इंडिया कैन डेफिनेटली यू नो स्निक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड अफकोर्स आई मीन प्रोग्रेस इन दिस मैटर अभी वेस्टर्न मीडिया में और अमेरिका में काफी इंडिया के बारे में चर्चा होने लगे है एंड दैट दैट इज बिकॉज कैन इंडिया बिकम एन अल्टरनेटिव टू चाइना तो हमारे लिए इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है इवन इंडिया ऑल्सो प्लेड वेरी क्रुशियल रोल इन दिस कोरोना क्राइसिस एज वी नो दैट इंडिया वॉज द फर्स्ट कंट्री लाइक प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी आई मीन हु अरेज द वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग ऑफ सार्क नेशन एंड देन ही कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड वन सार्क कोविड नाइनटीन फंड that in india contributed 9 uh, almost 10 uh, million dollars to that fund it was the uh, pm narendra modi who called almost nine uh, head of the state of the g20 states also and india was the one nation uh, who almost supplied hydroxychloroquine to 110 nations so that is again a very important contribution of india and that's the reason now world is taking india very seriously america has offered india to uh, uh, to the, uh, the important seat of g7 group also most probably by september india will become the permanent member of the g7 that is a group of a very influential strong and developed nation which manage and control the world economy so india ke liye ye zarur blessing rahega but it not like it's not like a easy cake walk for all of us we will have to make very determined efforts like china made in last 30 years वो डिपेंड करता है कि किस तरह से हम हमारे पॉलिसीज़ को एग्जीक्यूट करते हैं सो एंटायर वर्ल्ड में हम देख रहे हैं ग्लोबलाइजेशन का क्राइसिस ग्लोबलाइजेशन का प्रोसेस क्राइसिस में है देन मल्टीलेटरल इंस्टीट्यूशंस क्राइसिस में है सारे नेशंस में प्रोटेक्शनिज्म का ट्रेंड फैल रहा है हाइपर नेशनलिज्म फैल रहा है निगेटिव uh, सीनियरियो है लेकिन इसके बाद में भी देर इज अ रे ऑफ होप फॉर द नेशन लाइक इंडिया क्या वी कैन यू नो कैपिटलाइज दिस अपॉर्चुनिटीज विच आर कमिंग अप uh that uh, china will probably uh, lose its credibility in the, during this corona crisis people will or nation will start looking at china very suspiciously china ka jo border and road initiative hai i don't think that this will this project will take the shape now china was under the impression that rise of china will be unchallenged before the corona crisis now china will have to cope up with the new reality no china's rise will not be unchallenged china's rise will be challenged by most of the nations a china will go down to the back foot agar china back foot pe chala jata hai to india has the opportunity to come up or india can bridge that gap but if india lose the asean countries will take this opportunity so totally up to us that how we can handle this situation and make this entire corona crisis or episode or convert into a success so this is a type of you know a brief presentation of course i mean uh, it's not possible for me to touch upon each and every aspect which are coming up uh, at the international level also and at the national level in the span of 30 minutes so i tried my level best to give you the bird eye view of what is transpiring at the global level and what is transpiring at the indian level and how india can make is place in the post corona world order thank you very much over to you uh, the chairperson of this session uh, professor mohan kashi
थैंक यू सर हेलो 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 यस यू आर ऑडिबल थैंक यू सर फॉर योर हाईली इंफॉर्मेटिव एंड मेसमराइजिंग स्पीच ऑन द टॉपिक विदाउट डिलेइंग मच आई नाउ डिक्लेअर द हाउस इज ओपन फॉर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर द रिसोर्स पर्सन सर आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम श्रीकांत कटोरे रिस्पेक्टेड सर एज यू मेंशन टू प्रोटेक्ट द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन कंट्रीज टू नीड कम टुगेदर हाउ विल यू डिफाइन इंडिया स्टैंड इन दिस प्रोसेस कंसिडरिंग द ड्रीम ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत well i mean uh, as far as this process of globalization uh, and how india will play a role to protect this process of globalization as already i mentioned in my speech but i will again reiterate that point that india has an opportunity to play a very potential role uh, in uh, in the process of uh, protecting this globalization in fact in fact india has already begun the process as i mentioned earlier that india is the first country in fact though uh, the corona virus epid uh, epidemic is spreading in india uh, in a colossal manner and we at the spur of movement requires the hydroxychloroquine uh, in a great quantity but despite of that fact india has shown the generosity to provide this uh, hydroxychloroquine to the uh, almost 110 nations india was the first nation who has created a precedent to contribute funds uh, to fight with this uh, corona crisis as we contributed 10 million uh, dollar fund for the sark uh, to help the sark nation to fight collectively the corona crisis and as far as the atmanirbhar bharat is concerned of course is a very important uh, appeal to the indians uh, that we uh, i mean this corona crisis has given us a type of uh, message a type of indication uh, a type of lesson to all of us that we cannot over dependent on the others so this is we i mean india is a one country uh, is a very unique country which can produce the food grains also and which can produce the trucks also i mean that is not possible with the european countries that is not possible with the gulf countries so india has a unique stature so and india has a huge domestic market i mean that is a very important aspect i mean we have the market of almost 42 crore people that is a 42 crore middle class i mean this i mean if we can mobilize this middle class market and probably i mean i mean we can ca capitalize this opportunity so we can start our own units and that is why i mean he called that we cannot depend on the other nations that they will give us uh, some uh, raw material for example in the pharmaceutical now india has taken the decision recently on march 27 we announced 900 million dollar policy uh, to uh, start the pharmaceutical parks in india uh, under this pharmaceutical parks we are encouraging our industrialists to start the plants to produce the api that is active pharmaceutical in ingredients so atmanirbhar is actually that you produce in india and then sell out of india that is again it's an enlargement of make in india policy it is an enlargement of uh, that we call um, as a startup india policy so this is very important flagship or very ambitious comprehensive appeal that the prime minister has made to the indians now we really have to take this opportunity i mean in a very positive and constructive manner okay one again question sir what will future of who as america is in non cooperation to who well very important question not only in case of who this is in case of almost all the regional and global institutions now all these regional and global institution are under challenge are they are under crisis and their crisis for survival so the mantra for this all institutions unless they reform themselves they cannot survive so reform is a very important medicine panacea for this institution if who want to survive because now who will have to face lot of economic crisis because america has almost stopped 500 million dollar funds to the who how who will compensate that okay so that is a very important aspect because other developing poor nations they cannot contribute and how who will run other projects like fight the polio fight the malaria fight the aids hiv virus they are running multiple projects so all multiple projects will come under the crisis unless who reform itself 
and this reforms is very important that is in case of um, uh, united nations also unless and until the security council change its nature unless and until the security council inculcate the members like india uh, japan even in germany in that case they cannot survive now the corona crisis has given a clear cut message to all these biased institutions that unless they reform they will perish so this is a mantra and that is the same applicable to who also okay one again one question from dr srikant bhote globalization globalization has destroyed the social welfare nature of our country because of which we are facing huge social divide if now we again enter a competitive market to upgrade our economic what will be the faith of the poor in the country well of course i mean this very important aspect is that uh i i will make a very important statement and very different type of uh, you put up put up a scenario i always believes and assumes that uh the economic development of india is a remedy for all these social problems that is one important aspect i mean at this point of moment we have the economy of 2.5 trillion dollar ha huh? once india become the economy of 10 trillion dollar i don't think that we will have this type of issues very take the example of china at this point of moment china is having only 1 crore poor population but in 1980 china had 52 crore poor population now in 30 years china developed itself in a systematic manner so for me i mean once you become a developed nation once you become a, a economically progressive nation like america or china your other issues the social issues also and issues on the borders also will automatically get resolved okay india will automatically get its em eminence it will india will get its recognition india will get its respect everything india will get the important aspect is that for that matter we will have to keep the patience india has to convert itself into one strong unit and economic development i think probably it's a panacea and medicine for all this Uh, issues what we uh, which which you have raised thank you devlankar sir thank you participants for fruitful interaction now we will move on to the speech of moderator of the session dr mohan kashikar Dr Mohan Kashikar is professor and head of the department of political science PGTT RTM Nagpur University Nagpur He was also recipient of gold medal in MA political science from RTM Nagpur University He was also visiting fellow at Institute of Conflict Analysis and Resolution George Mason University Virginia USA He has over 34 years of teaching experience in PG he is also shouldering responsibilities as chairman board of studies for political science in rtm nagpur university he is recognized phd guide some 15 phd scholars and 20 mphil scholars work under his supervision he has seven books to his credit publications of 40 research paper in different journals and over 100 articles published in newspaper so far he was also worked as a unit coordinator and editor of the nagpur center on project the compile encyclopedia of hinduism undertaken by north carolina and indian heritage research foundation usa he also presented research paper in different international seminars overseas and participated in seminar in washington dc in 1998 and madrid in 2012 he is also recognized as a trainer in national academy of direct taxes nagpur for irs iaas and iits probationers and in ordinance factory services college for engineering services and employees he was also looked after the office of iqac and rtm nagpur university as a director with this brief introduction now i invite dr mohan kashikar to deliver his address 
एज द मॉडरेटर ऑफ दिस सेशन डॉक्टर मोहन कासीकर सर थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर सिद्धार्थ वाणी आई माय ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स बट एंड पर्टिकुलरली द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ पीडब्ल्यूएस कॉलेज नमस्कार टू डॉक्टर मधुकर राव जी वासनिक सर डॉक्टर चिमणकर डॉक्टर विमल राठौड डॉक्टर सुदेश भोते एंड शैलेन्द्र देवणारकर देवणकर माय प्रेडिसेसर स्पीकर एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ द सेमिनार कॉन्ग्रेच्युलेशन्स टू पी डब्ल्यू एस कॉलेज एंड प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर यशवंत पाटील सर फॉर ऑर्गनाइजिंग सच अ वंडरफुल वेबिनार ऑन अ व्हेरी रेलेवंट टॉपिक my uh, earlier speaker my friend dr devankar spoke about the impact of corona crisis on the world politics and uh, um, raised some issues and highlighted the uh, situation that is going to take place and how the global politics uh, will change in the uh, coming future um, he has uh, highlighted different issues different pertinent issues which are going to affect the global politics uh, after the corona crisis uh, i won't go into the details of those points but i will restrict my submission on uh, india's foreign policy impact of uh, uh, corona crisis on india's foreign policy and india's future role in global politics um, as you all know that india has been following a policy of uh, uh, keeping equidistance from different power blocks since independence non alignment was our basic uh, foreign policy objective uh, rather a very guiding principle of our foreign policy uh, subsequently we have uh, reshaped redrafted our foreign policy issues and as per the needs of the time we have uh, adopted uh, different perspective to deal with different issues Uh, over the last uh, 10 or 15 years our foreign policy has become more aggressive more issue based and uh, more pertinent as far as some global issues are concerned we have we have we are aspiring to become a global leader and trying to win over a permanent seat in the united states security council that is our uh, new foreign policy objective and in that direction our diplomatic efforts have uh, taken a, a definite direction <clears throat> uh, in the in the past uh, 10 years or so uh, our diplomatic efforts our foreign policy uh, endeavors have been to gather global support on india's stand on different issues uh, it the credit must be given to the uh, government for uh, garnering support from different uh, blocks in the world uh, particularly islamic countries southeast asian countries countries who are uh, middle powers so called middle powers in the world they have supported india on many issues uh, and as a result our image in the world has enhanced world global image of india is uh, is that we are a democratic country uh, supported by strong values uh, of our foreign policy uh, economically prosperous country fundamentally very humanitarian country and we are a mature responsible country as far as our diplomatic efforts are concerned we conducted nuclear test but at the same time we assured the world that india will not use this nuclear power uh, for any uh, attack on any country our atomic energy is for peaceful purpose and we stick to that uh, promise and we have followed that very rigorously so that has enhanced india's image as a globally peaceful country peace loving country uh, mature country and responsible country that has that will help india to achieve uh, more and more support uh, in the future years to come as far as global crisis faced by uh, uh, generated by this covid crisis is concerned 
it has put many challenges before india's foreign policy as dr devankar just highlighted uh, our prime minister took initiative to organize online meetings of south asian countries uh, of some uh, southeast asian countries and also uh, there was a personal online meeting with australian counterpart this shows that india is ready to take initiative india is ready to show its leadership to the world and uh, take initiative in the crisis not only for its own purpose but also to bring uh, the world whole world out of this crisis by way of helping other countries uh, with medical supplies with uh, uh, with uh, training facilities with um, uh, exchange of knowledge and uh, uh, even technical knowledge so that shows india is ready to take up the initiative uh, in the world to reform the present situation or, and help the world to come out of this crisis um india has uh, one more challenge that is india's relations with uh, united states uh, after the uh, globalization uh, era united nations uh, uh, sorry united states had become a global uh, single power and it was dominating entire global politics in the present situation uh, india's stand and also the uh, developing uh, world situation has compelled united uh, united states to support india on many issues uh, president trump praised india's stand uh, in public uh, meetings um, on many issues that shows that india is ready to support uh, india is ready uh, india will get diplomatic support from us on many issues that is one advantage for india's foreign policy um, another challenge uh, that india faces is from china as dr devankan mentioned china has taken taken a giant leap as far as its economy uh, its uh, infrastructural facilities its uh, trade is concerned and it's a great challenge it is very difficult to um, overlook china as far as economy as far as trade and as far as uh, its political aspirations is concerned and india is uh, china is following a very aggressive policy as recent developments on our uh, ladakh border is evident so we have india will have to deal with this neighbor very aggressively very proactively and with a firm hand chinese are supposed to be very uh, hard negotiator and it is very difficult to defeat chinese negotiators on the negotiating table that, that indian uh, diplomats must keep in mind and uh, they will have to take a tough stand as far as china is concerned um, as far as other neighbors of india as, are concerned uh, india need not worry though nepal uh, recently raised some issue uh, about the uh, map on of the border but that uh, is a very um, small issue as far as uh, uh, nepal is concerned but, but uh, and main uh, provocation uh, for china taking this stand is again china so we can deal with nepal we can deal with pakistan we can deal with other neighbor, neighbors uh, in a very um, sophisticated manner uh, sri lanka bangladesh or even maldives uh, their government is supporting uh, india in many matters and we need not worry about those neighbors uh what is what is uh, main concern issue is how india is going to deal with the global situation and as mentioned by dr devankar uh, global agencies multilateral organizations trade blocks many regional organizations are uh, are in a fix they are losing their grip over their uh, uh, global politics so this is a challenge and it is it is a challenge before india's foreign policy too. policy to deal with this situation india attack india can take initiative in uh, actively uh, initiating reform of these world organizations uh, india is aspiring to become a global leader and uh, wants a seat in united nations security council this is the time and this is the proper time i think india should ask for uh disbanding the united nations and creating a new world organization altogether as it was done after the first world war league of nations was uh, uh, disbanded 
dismantled and the uh, united nations was created by uh, leading nations of the world they, they came together and discussed the formation of united nations same process can be initiated now uh, the world health organization or united nations or other organizations are almost defunct and they are uh, not able to play any active role in the in uh, in global politics so better it is uh, the time to uh, disband the united nations and create a new world organizations with india and other uh, middle powers uh, being represented in the new body similarly some regional blocks will also have to be reformed uh, european union is already uh, in a in a very difficult situation it has it has shattered the european economy is shattered and in this situation um, uh, india can uh, take initiative uh, to reshuffle the uh, regional groupings as for example asean india has a, been playing a very active role in asean uh, this this organization can be uh, supported this organization can be groomed to become a strong organization other trade organizations trade groupings like uh, uh, oil producing countries uh, or islamic organizations india has also already uh, received great diplomatic support from islamic organizations that is a, a great victory for indian foreign policy uh, so in future what i see uh, before india's foreign policy um india can play a mature a responsible role in the global politics and uh, that is going to be a big challenge for india and for that um, somebody raised the issue of atmanirbhar bharat our indian economy should uh, take a giant leap forward so that our economy is consolidated further uh, we keep become self reliant uh, as the trend explained by dr devankar is going on we should protect our own industries we should protect our trade we should protect our uh, uh, natural resources and built industries which are labor oriented which can generate employment and which can uh, give employment to billions of people and uh, become uh, indian economy becomes stronger and stronger that is one way to deal with this kind of global situations and particularly the challenge put up by the chinese uh, aggressive foreign policy another challenge that uh, i can i see that will happen in future is the reverse brain drain in the in the 60s and 70s uh, our uh, young generations uh, passing out from indian universities went to Uni united states and other european countries for education and later down they settled there and now they have become uh, citizens of the, those countries what i see uh, those countries european countries and united states will now put restrictions on uh, such uh, such students coming to their countries this will put uh, a burden on indian economy uh, those people who are waiting for green card or for becoming full fledged citizen of those countries uh, will not get employment and they will try to come back to india and other millions of million students are already waiting uh, for h1 visa and go to other countries for employment this trend will stop and it will be the responsibility of our indian government to create employment for such people that is a big challenge so india has to uh, face this challenge and uh, i am sure with strong leadership with visionary leadership and support from the um, uh, other political parties india will emerge uh, a strong leader and will play play a active role a very responsible role and very positive role in global politics uh, i conclude my submission here and uh, once again i thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to put my view in this webinar thank you very much namaskar thank you hello thank you thank you sir hello we can discuss some issues if there are any points to be discussed thank you sir for expressing your expert opinion on the theme of the present topic thank you again dr mohan kashikar sir thank you dear participants we have now reached the final address of 
chairperson of this national webinar the chairperson of the national webinar and our patron dr madhukar rao wasnik is a physician by profession elected as the dean faculty of medicine in rtm nagpur university he founded people's welfare society in 1967 which is running two higher educational institutions and many schools he also founded indian institute of welfare in 1973 which is working in training of employability skills and supports self help groups he is renowned politicians and academicians in high repute in central india traveled widely for delivering public speeches and participated in discussions throughout the country he is a source of our enthusiasm over to dr madhukar rao ji wasnik good afternoon to all the distinguished guests namaskar moderators of both the session dr mohan kashikar hazardi department political science rtc university nagpur dr sangeeta meshram associate professor of the dr santukro ji maharaj university political science department resource persons of both the sessions dr sandesh wag head of the history department mumbai university and dr shailendra devdankar head of the department political science vidarbha institute of science and humanities amravati delegates experts and delegates from across the country principal of the college the name principal ekshan party ipm a coordinator hard working and dynamic dr sudesh bote vice principal dr narayan bagade converse of the webinar and all the faculties of the college i deem it's my pleasure and privilege to chair this national seminar webinar on this very important topic by by department of history and political science from the morning very important deliberations are made in this well organized webinar almost all the speakers and the moderators they have given their thoughts elaborate elaborate each and every point and practically mesmerize the whole participants and we are here for in this webinar from the for the morning very important deliberations are made in this very organized webinar dr sudesh wag from university of mumbai spoke on very important topic like problems of migratory laborers and how ambedkarism could help them overcome the pandemic basically various constitutional provisions given for the backward communities sc st and over and other backward classes and various acts and commissions are functional since the implementation of the constitution the safeguards are given for the under privilege to ensure their life and daily wages now how this is the time for government to deliver the logical and practical aids to those unfortunate people affected of pandemic outlook in fact we have all seen how these migrant laborers suffered after the lockdown it's a the matter which we have we have been seeing in tv as practical every day actually prime minister had committed a meeting on this on 24th there was a lockdown announced on 26th the prime minister conveyed cabinet meeting and told all the ministers to go to the respective states collect the collect the collection from the district sp that the district and collect them collect the draft class from the, about the industries and migrant laborers in that state 
this would have happened practically this chaos could not could be avoided anyway now this is the pandemic outbreak and we have to face this covid 19 very forcefully dedicatedly and we have to walk with this corona for long time it's not a easy one that will be, it is going to end very soon the moderator of this first session dr sangeeta meshana also spoke on the topic keeping her role on moderator justified she spoke very well on the topic moderated nicely the the speaker of the second session dr shailendra devlankar spoke on the public policy of the country especially under the lockdown conditions it is true that on the international level when each country is facing terrible situation and casualties in lack international help and cooperation to each other in various grounds is very essential to foster our socio cultural relationship dr shailendra ji has very elaborately discussed all the points from all the angles and practically mesmerized we all which which is very strong lecture on this issue it is very essential to foster our social economic social cultural relations with the neighboring countries because this is the time as a responsible member of different international coalitions we have sent urgent help to health equipment medicines food to the different countries and joining countries for in need we have our country has helped them india has helped them on this occasion we have to discuss as to how we can host our international diplomacy to catch opportunity in becoming the inflation nation and lead this country ahead dr mohan kashyapar was the moderator of the second session who has given a great insight to the subject his speech was equally resourceful and highly informative to such a situation when world economics are collapsing we as a strong country in case of economy and manpower can develop good regional as well as world level cooperation among the nation as many experts see that india has a great opportunity in becoming a strong nation we could see the results of this when president of america mr donald trump is supporting india for his candidature in g8 g8 countries and also in the security council of you know but at the same time we must remain alert for the security of our own nation the lapses in such political relations could cost us seriously the example of the same we have seen is the lack where china invaded in our territory which is a serious serious matter we need to answer to the illegal approach of our neighbors countries with the strong diplomatic moves and this is the general scenario both the speakers dr devlankar and dr kashikar has mentioned has elaborated and practically specialized with their speech this is the time now to for the government to go ahead with all this dear participants i can i consider this webinar webinar reached its successful side note with highly academic deliberations and discussions i congratulate all of you for being part of this webinar this is the success of the webinar organized by the department of history and political science when more than 1200 participants registered in this webinar i congratulate principal dynamic principal h1 patil and iqma hard working coordinator and genius dr sudesh sudesh bote who guided the department for his successful webinar 
I congratulate convener of the winner, Dr. Chandrasekhar Patil, Dr. Mahindra Gaikwar, Dr. Vimal Rathor, Dr. Sushant Chimankar, and Dr. Ashish Thur, and the faculties of the department who conceptualized this event and executed it excellently. I thank them. I appreciate the effort made by that one as a support to the result. I appreciate the help extended by Dr. Nathan Lange, Deepak Jaiswal, Mangesh Askar, Daneshwar Nikhare, Rohit Kanujia, Mr. Kailash Rathod to make this event successful. I congratulate all the faculty members and non-teaching staff of the college who supported this event. I thank all the honorable guests and the participants with their, with their words, lectures, and the informative and bringing the scenario before us. I thank all of them. I conclude my speech again thanking you all. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for giving your address in this webinar and also for guiding us for our academic ventures. Now, participants, we have reached the end part of this successful national webinar. I now invite Dr. Sushant Simankar, faculty in political science in our college to propose vote of thanks. Over to Dr. Sushant Simankar, sir. तो नहीं ये नहीं दिलते ऐसा कहीं नहीं है माला मुन्ना ही नहीं है सुशांत सिमंकर कंसीडर इस माय प्रिविलेज टू प्रपोज वोट ऑफ थैंक्स इन दिस सक्सेस नेशनल वेबिनार ऑन दी टॉपिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग पोस्ट लॉकडाउन इफेक्ट्स ऑन इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स मिडेटिंग थ्रू हिस्टोरिकल रिस्पेक्टिव हियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स वी � to end and every successfully. I congratulate all the resource person and participants for supporting this venture, Dr. Madhukara Vasni, PWS Arts and Commerce College, Nagpur. First, all of, first of all, I express my sincere thankfulness, Dr. Madhukara Vasni, ex-MLC, for chairing this national webinar and addressing the participants on this occasion. I express my sincere thankfulness to moderators of both the session, Dr. Mohan Kasika, Professor and Head, Department of Political Science, and Dr. Sangeet Amishram, HOD of History, both from the Altim Nakhpur, Nikati Nakhpur, for their resource address in this webinar and for their cooperation. I extend my thankfulness to resource person of both the session, Dr. Sandeep Swag, Professor and Head, Department of History, University of Mumbai, and Dr. Sailedra Devlankar, Professor, Department of Political Science, Government Vidarbha Institute of Science and Humanities, Amravati, who joined us in this webinar and delivered a resourceful uh, and informative address. My thanks are due to Dr. Eswan Pati, Principal Dr. Madhukara Vasni, AWS Art and Commerce College, Nagpur, for his welcome address in this webinar early this morning and his encouragement and support in every possible ways to organize such events for college. This webinar could not have been successful without uh, overwhelming participants of delegates. I am thankful to all of you for joining the webinar.
has an organizing team conver convenance of the webinar dr cs patil hod of history dr vimal rathor hod of political science dr mahindra gaikwad department of history mr ashish pun department of history who extended to possible support in the making of this event grand success i congratulate them for excellent team work my thanks are due to iqc coordinator and advisor of the webinar dr sudesh bhote for his the unstinting support and the guidance being a part of tpws i am thankful to our librarian mr siddharth wani who stands with us in every possible ways and for completing the second session i am thankful to dr cs patil for taking up the responsibility uh, of completing the first session as well some important help extend to us by our college members mr dipak deswal mr mangesh askar mr gnanesh nikhare mr rohit konojia mr kailas rathod i appreciate their the cooperation to make this event successful i am need i am indebted to the pravin gosekar for bnc college for providing us zoom and youtube access uh, last but not least i am thankful to entire staff of dr madhukara vasu pws art and commerce college nagpur with this final note of thanks i hereby take permission from chairperson to close the proceeding of the webinar dear participants we will send a certificate to your mail address within 7 days be in touch with the organizers and whatsapp thank you all of for joining us धन्यवाद नमस्कार पाटील सर नमस्कार धन्यवाद धन्यवाद वासनिक सर नमस्कार धन्यवाद अशिकर सर खूप खूप धन्यवाद वासनिक सर आपण शेजारी आहोत शिवाजीनगर मध्ये डियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स विल बी रिलीजिंग सर्टिफिकेट्स ऑफ दिस वेबिनार शॉर्टली वी टेक सम टाइम बट बिफोर दैट वी रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज submit your feedback so i mean today itself within an hour we'll be sending links of feedbacks to your email uh, please join uh, us in telegram so that uh, we may be able to i mean send you uh, feedback and certificates very easily so whatever problems you face please do, uh, do uh, i mean inform us via whatsapp or uh, a telegram or you can mail us or you can talk to directly to the conveners of this webinar will be solving all the grievances related to e certificates